Where do I begin? Eden is a city of light, brighter than the sun itself. Full of grandeur and magic that has changed humans more than one could imagine. Allowing human augmentation and artificial life. And where there is light, there is surely shadow. But all is not what it seems here in the last city on Earth. To find the truth, you must take a bite from the forbidden fruit in the Garden of Eden. Welcome back, and uh, before we get officially started, um, there is the unfortunate news that one of our cast will not be able to be with us here tonight um, due to some sickness issues. Uh, she can't be here for the premiere, on, which is very unfortunate. We're all sad, and uh, I wish that she gets better soon, and I'm sure we all do. Uh -huh. um, besides that, uh, because of this issue being a premiere, we have the whole thing of this new character that is going to be a pivotal part of this show and episode not being here for you know uh the things that they're going to be a part of and i will be kind of playing out the character more or less um and having to adapt with that so please bear with me on the role playing on that side um i will not be taking over the ex exact persona but i will be kind of explaining their actions so um let us bring our focus and attention into the show at hand. So welcome to Eden. There's a couple things you need to know about Eden to understand this story. First, an artificial intelligence known only as Her rules the city and is worshipped as God. Second, Her is in charge of a group named Prometheus that polices the city. And lastly, everyone on Earth is born human. However, it is customary that an augment is placed in each child at birth. Depending on the child's genes, the augment affects them in vastly differing ways and also defines what kind of augments the child will be able to attune with as they develop. This augment is known as the Reactive Alignment Core Enhancement, or commonly referred to as race. While some race races, uh, such as the Dragonborn, cause an overabundance of magic power that requires extreme augmentation of one's body, others may only be able to augment themselves through external means, such as the orcs. And this brings us to a surprising friendship between an orc named Dawn and a dwarf named Eris. While some have disapproving views of other races, these two friends currently make their way to the notorious Scrap Stadium in the center of Eden, where a gala for the first new or for the brand new season of Clash, an entertainment phenomenon loved and beholded by most of the city's residents, is taking place. Light shines brightly on the tall elf's or excuse me, the tall half orc's kind face and bright amber eyes. On her person she wears an augmented glove and a large backpack that appears mechanical. By her side, Eris stands tall, at least as tall as he can. With dark hair and wearing a leather tunic as the two make their way through the crowded streets, the stadium dome towers above them as they approach. So, Dawn is walking along with... Um, Eris and is giddily enjoying herself, looking around at the brand new city around her. 
Uh, Eris is, is rolling his eyes. Um, he's had to hear about the, the Clash games uh, for the past half hour while they've been walking. And uh, he really has no interest in the Clash games at all. And uh, he's just been kind of rolling his eyes and looking around and showing just genuine disinterest. At times, he calls her yawn when she gets too excited about uh, the topic that she's talking about. And, um, yeah, he's, he's trying to ignore her, but she's making it really difficult. Um, I just realized that I have made a mistake while I uh, – the technical difficulties earlier. Let me just fix one thing really quick. Um, I accidentally placed two cameras in the wrong location. Um, sorry to give a small pause. Um, but you can continue, uh, Eris. Uh, yeah, so Eris is a uh, sh uh, short. He's very short. He's about uh, three and a half feet tall. Uh, he's not super stocky, though, uh, as you would expect someone who's short to be, uh, because he gets frequent exercise. So he's kind of wiry and thin. He has pretty long uh, black hair that goes a little bit lower than his shoulders. He's he's got a leather tunic on, uh, and uh, underneath that, he's got a green shirt that kind of sticks out. Uh, he has one red eye, and he's got an augmented glove on uh, both hands. All right. Um, yeah, so as you make your way through the rest of the city, approaching the stadium, um, you Don kind of motions over to you, um, explaining all these new updates in the latest Clash events and stuff like that. <sighs> Mm-hmm. Please go on. I wish I would I really wish Fluffy was here to uh to you know, so you would have someone to talk to about this. Um she kind of uh expresses her uh distaste in your disenjoyment of the Clash franchise and uh continues to nag at you, um releasing a All right, plethora listen, of information. Listen, Don. I got you these tickets as, as a deal for how drunk I got the other night. And the deal was that you would not talk about Clash on the walkover and that I would not have to pay any attention once we got there. That was our deal. Um, she kind of sighs and um, says okay as she begins to mope around, looking around instead at the um, a mass of random people just walking around the uh, area outside the stadium and as you guys get up to the front gate and front steps to the main entrance um, there is a security guard checking tickets it is from what you can tell a high elf and after you stand in line for a bit you eventually get up to where he is and his belting voice pierces your ears at first and he says next uh, yeah, hi. We got we got two tickets to the event. You, you, you two? It, in, in the gala? <sighs> yup. Uh, we got these tickets. So we're here to get in. Uh, <laughs> you, you must be mistaken. I, I, an, a lowly orc. You, you, you're so dirty. You look like you work in... Uh, nope, she has as much right to be here as I do, and my name's on the ticket, and I pull out uh, my ID, and I show it to him. Eris Thorngage, name's on the ticket, plus one. She's my plus one. He uh, snatches go. snatches the ticket out of your hand and, and peers over it, uh, kind of holding it up to where he can see in the sun. And uh, after eyeing it for a second or two, he looks at you and says... You, this is very odd. Your tickets say to go into the back sector C gate. I, that's not even an entrance for public access. Uh, and you are aware, Eris, that of this gate. This is one that you use routinely for your work. Uh, yeah, that that's not a gate uh, for participants or uh, VIP individuals that's the gate for security and deliveries uh we're not we're not using that gate buddy uh, mm, uh, 
listen here. I don't even know if you're pulling a shenanigan or whatnot. Um, maybe this is just a hologram. I... Really, first off, do you even watch Clash at all? And he peers over the two of you. Uh, Dawn jumps at the chance to uh, admit her excitedness over the games and um, starts spouting that she is a huge fan of the game. And he says, Who is your favorite Clash participant then? And she kind of just rants over about her favorite Clash star known as Superior. All right, all right, listen, bro. We'll go around the back. Just stop making her talk about Clash, okay? It's fine. Um, the elf laughs at the mention of this name and um, says, That oh, poor child. Uh, well, go see if they'll let you in there, then. Uh, Eris snatches the tickets out of his hand and kind of gives him a glowering stare as he kind of walks off and uh, tries to keep Don uh, from talking about Clash anymore by talking about how uh, crap it is that they weren't allowed in the main entrance. As you work your way around to the back, um, you do find this entrance. Um, and whenever you do so, there is no one standing there. Yet you do know that the um, scanning device, which is located beside the door, is able to read codes much like the one on the ticket. I, I hold up the ticket to the scanning device. Um, it accepts it and the door beeps open. All right, Don. I know you're excited. This she's, is unusual. She's jumping at this point. Th this is a little unusual. So just, just con try to calm down a little bit. And she asks what is so unusual about this. Uh, I, I use this, this door for work. Uh, this isn't really for for participants or spectators. This isn't that kind of entrance. I don't I don't really know why they sent us around this direction or why the keypad was able to accept my ticket. It doesn't doesn't really add up. And she says, um, "Well, if it works, it works." And she kind of opens the door and rushes in. Well, at least she's not talking about Clash anymore. And uh, Eris follows after her. Um, as you go through the door, uh, the first thing you see is your normal access tunnel entrance that you use for work. Um, this does lead, however, to a balcony with a giant glass window, almost like a picture window, um, that peers down into the bays underneath the stadium that contain the mechs as people work on them and whatnot. Um, the bays are lined up back to back with doors that close in between them, but most of them are open. And as you get to this point, Dawn presses her face and hands up against the glass and is avidly ooing and aahing and talking about the parts and intricacies of all of these mechanical things that you don't um, even, you know, you see it every day, so. Eris immediately looks for uh, some kind of uh, alcoholic beverage or snack or some kind of service button in the room uh, so he can get inebriated as quickly as possible. Um, you do know that there is a vending machine a little further down the hallway that is usable only by personnel only, which you do have a badge. Okay. Uh, hey, hey, Don, I, just keep watching the thing. I'll be right back. I'm going to go get uh, several dozen beers. Okay. Um, and uh, Eris goes down the hallway. Um, as she's uh, still, she almost doesn't even hear you, but as she turns um, around uh, and sees you starting to go away, she reaches over with her longer limbs than yours and grabs your shirt and just pulls you back um, right by her side. Oh. Uh, Damn it, Don! it's a new shirt. She says, this is important because she sees something odd. And she starts poking on the glass and pointing down the bays. Eris, Eris looks down at the bays to see what she's talking about. Uh, make a perception check for me. Uh, 18. All right. Um, looking through the glass, um, you can just make out what she's rambling about. Uh, you almost can't even hear her with how fast she's spitting out things. You do see some figures in the distance 
putting another figure inside of one of the mechs, but it, it is odd to you. After you start focusing in on it, you realize that the man they are putting in the mech seems to be unconscious. Uh, Dawn, is that is that normal? And she shakes her head no in almost amazement. Uh, should we do something or let someone know? Um, as you peer back t towards it, um, you do also notice that the man, upon further inspection, has bruises all over his face. It looks like he's been severely beaten. Don, he looks like he got the shit kicked out of him. We should, we we got to call somebody, man. Uh, and uh, uh, Eris looks around to see if there's some kind of uh, phone. Uh, he 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 pulls out his contact device, and um, he's he's trying to see if he knows anybody or can contact anybody. But she um, she nug as you do so, she kind of nudges and pulls on your shirt, um, kind of gesturing mm -hmm. back towards the window, saying, "But aren't those Prometheus, or are my eyes?" messing with me and as you turn and look you do notice that the members who are putting this figure into this mech are indeed prometheus members uh eris eris looks down and and he goes that, well that that's not right they they need to stop that and uh he kind of like without thinking he's like hey hey stop that the bay doors um begin closing slowly um, and by the time you get done with your ranting and yelling um, the doors are closed and you cannot see any further going on uh, Eris, Eris turns to Don and he's like hey we gotta go do something that, that man's gonna die we gotta go stop him um, she kind of like looks down and twiddles her thumbs um, expressing kind of a fear of should we even do that once we get in trouble all right all right all right uh let me let me think let me think um what uh, what what ways uh when has a fight been stopped before how what, when when has a fight ever been canceled she thinks back and she she says um only uh the only time she can ever remember anything like this is in the past, whenever a, um, a match was canceled due to extraneous circumstances that no one in the the viewers didn't really understand, no one really knows. Oh, so what are the rumors? Come on, you're the biggest Clash fan ever. You have to have heard something about these matches. She kind of just gets lost in thought, thinking uh, she starts rambling about setups, and uh, Superior would understand and would help her if he could. Uh, do I know who she's talking about? Um, you do know of the name. Uh, the name is one of the biggest Clash stars. He had his peak um, in the entertainment of Clash not too long ago where um, she has ranted multiple times and rambled multiple times about the disgust she has for the incident where this man that she beloves so much happened to be in a match um, personal where he was physically in the mech during the fight um, and had a horrible accident and has basically been out of the game since then. All right, well, well how, much, how much time do we have, Don? How much time after they close the bay doors does the match usually start? Um, she says she doesn't know because it's a gala and it's the season kind of party that usually it's, um, it's only broadcasted outside. We, we would probably have to go into the party to determine that. And you said uh, this the superion superon superior. What was his Superior. name again? Superior. Where's he at? She says she doesn't know. Not no, not many people know where he is. Went off to since then. All right. Well, let's let's uh, go down to the gala and see if we can talk to some people who can kind of stop this thing. And she nods her head and follows along with you. And uh, yeah, so Eris is going to go down um, to the gala. Um, uh, if he if he knows the way, how to um, get down there. Following through some stuff, you're able to kind of follow some signs and whatnot, and eventually come out to a hallway where you see um, a mass of people kind of entering a large room you've never been inside of before. So after kind of looking around and checking a few things, you do determine that this seems to be the place. 
All right, all right, Don. Uh, you're not super welcome uh, in these parts. So you're going to have to tell me who who the most influential person here is. And uh, I'll go talk to him. You And you kind of stand in the back. Maybe, um, and he, he looks around for like a serving tray or something that he can give her to kind of like disguise her as maybe like one of the, the servants. Um, she she kind of uh, nudges against against that and um, says no that she doesn't want uh, she doesn't care if they see her for what she is that she um, doesn't care what they think um, he's gonna he's gonna like turn her to face him and kind of pull her down so they're almost at eye level yep. and he's gonna be like listen listen Don I, I know it's messed up uh, but a lot of people don't like uh, people like you and they don't have good feelings about you and if we're gonna get help for that guy the only way we can do it is if people are listening to us and and they'll listen to me a lot better than they'll listen to you she kind of thinks about it for a bit and nods and allows you to kind of uh take some clothing and kind of fashion it around her where it's a little harder to tell where she's from and what she exactly looks like okay all right all right that'll work um all right so who's who's the most influential who should we go talk to um, about can, stopping this match uh can you go ahead and uh Roll me a um, intelligence check to see how well you fashion this um, disguise on her. Straight int. Yep, that's fine. Uh, Sixteen. All right. So you guys head towards the gala. Um, going in, um, you, it is more uh, ridiculous and more of a spectacle than anything. It is the most fine room you think you've ever set your foot in. Uh, there is a pond with a waterfall in the corner. It is very huge. We're talking about a uh, at least a 500 by uh, 800 foot room. Um, with at the far end, away from the doors you enter, there is a giant uh, cutout in the wall that goes to like almost like a balcony, where there is a wall of glass that overlooks. And from here, you can even see it. It overlooks the interior of the stadium where the fights are being held are usually held um, and as you bust through these doors um, you look around and Dawn starts kind of glancing around searching as much as she can um, and with that um, we're going to shift our focus um, to some other people in the room outside of where, when this is going on exactly um, So, across the room, uh, un unbeknownst to you and um, Dawn, is a high elf that leans against a wall in a small alcove in the corner of the balcony. He stares out the, lo the large open glass wall overlooking the arena so very familiar to him. The glass reflects his beautiful face, half-hidden by an intricate mask. His long braided hair sways behind him and the smell of c cigar smoke clings to him like a cloak. As I stand there observing all of this, uh, I guess I'll turn away from the glass for a moment and look and see if I see any familiar faces here at the gala. Um, as you turn uh, and kind of shift your gaze back towards the gala, you notice two things. First, the music composer named Zeke, who makes all the music for uh, Clash and is well known in the community for making his style of music, is um, playing his music t in the uh, up against the wall near the doors on a stage. Um, that you kind of saw him set getting set up but he is in full effect playing his music now and as you scan the rest of the room the second thing you notice is a figure short but reminding you of utter destruction reminding you of your loss this is someone excuse me uh, this person is a small gnome who is wearing a very polished and clean suit 
And as he walks, you can tell he walks with a grin plastered on his face that hides any kind of possible conceived thought that he has in his head. And the clicking and clacking of his shoes gets louder as you can see he has met his eyes on your figure and is approaching. I just rub the uh, open side of my face and try not to make too much eye contact with him directly. But uh, I, I, in fact, I even want to try to move into the crowd a little bit if I can, try to move away from him. Yeah, um, give me a kind of a... Give me a dex, uh, base dex check, and uh, we'll roll with that. It's going to be a five. <laughs> uh, you try to push through some people in the crowd, and uh, um, before you can actually do so, um, you hear the cackling from behind you uh, for this familiar voice. Um, and he says, <laughs> Doing the same old always, aren't we? <sighs> What is it you want, Frisbee? Ah, Barry, old pal, old pal, buddy. Listen, why are you even here? What, I, I can't uh, come and visit the old haunts anymore? Is, is it this your place too now? Huh? Oh, it's more my place than yours, and you know that. You, you lost this place a long time ago back in that last match. You haven't even fought since then. <laughs> Jesus. He turns to his companions standing around him. They all start busting out laughing. Yeah, well, you know, Frisbee, my career is uh, no mystery to anybody. So unless you've got something important to say, I, I think I'm going to get back to the party just like you should. <sighs> and he uh, has a champagne glass in his hand and he raises it and uh, he kind of, a waiter's walking by and he kind of grabs a uh, metal uh, piece off of it a stirring a rod and uh, kind of clinks it up against his glass and he kind of turns towards the, the group around him and he goes Hey everybody, look who it is, huh? The piece of shit himself Sir Peria in the flesh if you could call that if you could even call him flesh anymore, half of it anyway, as he motions towards your face. And uh, the whole crowd starts busting up laughing again. Yeah. Uh, with them laughing and uh, him pointing me out, I'm just going to start making my way towards the nearest exit. There's no need for me to be here anymore. Um, he... Um, as you kind of make your way, you're able to move away from the group and uh, as you do so he kind of mocks you and, and uh, says yeah run run like you always have never fight your battles face to face or half face to face am I right guys and they start laughing once more as the, the laughter dissipates and you walk uh, a little further into the room yeah as he's saying that I, I'm gonna whip back around you know what frisbee I don't run from anything anybody else in this room confident enough to get in a mech by yourself no so unless you want to judge me by fighting on that field frisbee i think we're gonna be good he kind of shakes his head and spits at the ground and uh turns around and walks away and kind of motions for his uh friends to follow in suit and they do yeah, and I'll just work my way to the far edge of the party. I'm not going to leave after that. And at this point, um, I'd like to shift our focus once more to someone else also at this gala at the same time. And while all this is happening, in, uh, in the opposite corner from where Eris and Dawn entered, stands an a elf at a high top drinking and eating finger foods. Her bright blue hair hides under her long iridescent cloak and glowing blue network pathways carved in her skin shift through gradients of soft and dark blues. I'm gonna pick up my drink and take like the tiniest sip of it and then place it down. It's disgusting as the always are at these galas. They're never good. And as you do so, um, 
a figure kind of walks up behind you and you can feel the presence. Turning around, you see someone that you have seen many a times before, but never in person. This is the notorious actress, Trisha Vanguard. I'm going to stand up. Uh, Trisha, right? Uh, yes. Um, <laughs> very uh, correct. Correct. I'm so glad you've heard of me. Oh, I've heard a lot about you, actually. All good, I oh. hope. <laughs> yes, uh, more so than you would think. She kind of laughs as she picks off a pe uh, finger food from your high top and uh, slides the cheese off into her mouth and kind of eats it with an elegance that you only see of in movies. Yes, well, uh, I'd like to think that everything that people say about me is good. I've worked very hard to curate this image, as I'm sure you understand. Oh, very much so. And um, how has the painting been going? Glorious. I haven't been painting much recently. I was working on that art installation for that lovely man. Oh, yes, I heard all about that. <laughs> yeah, funny thing is that you took the extreme with that one, taking the name that they forced you to take and making it literal. She kind of winks at you a little bit. Well, sometimes literal is good. Yes, especially when you're surrounded by none other than everything else but literalness in this city. She kind of looks around, peering out almost in disgust from what you can tell at the rest of the crowd. And as her eyes meet back to you, a smile pops back up on her face. And she says, you know, I really enjoyed your, uh, or adored more so, enfolded, was it? Uh, yes. Um, I'm glad that you've seen it. I didn't realize that you knew that much of my work. Mm, uh, see, it's so sad listening to all the other people form theories about said piece. Most see it as the hands you beautifully drew cradling a poor scared child, but between you and me, I know that's bullshit. Trisha, what makes you say that? Anyone could see at second glance, darling, that the hands are merely constraining the child. But ironically enough, I find the distaste in your adoration for her being kind of ironic to me anyway. But, you know, speaking of the truth and misinterpretation, I know that you're... You're a seeker of truth as well, much like myself. That could be my one true mission. Oh, I Given know. enough time and resources. Yes. See, she leans in and kind of uh, gets to where she's whispering at your ear and looking past you and says, I can see right through you, Varia, just like those layers of paint on your piece, Delirium. And you're not wrong, you know. You will find the truth. It will appear before your very eyes. And as she says this, she slips away uh, behind you into the thick crowd. I try to see if I can find where she's going. I take like three steps away from my table. Um, as you turn around and uh, make an advancement towards her, um, roll a perception check for me, please. Um, 16. So you see her figure make a decent way through the crowd. You actually are able to keep track of her. But at a moment's notice, you catch a glimpse of pixelation as you can tell that that was a mere hologram of her. I'm going to turn back to the table, sit back down, 
and chug the drink. And at this time, I would like to shift gaze to actually a little bit back in time. Um, before all of this happened, yes, rewind, um, we now find ourselves looking at a half-elf with one arm covered by a long cloak, standing in the shadows of a back alley near the stadium. His other arm glows with purple tattoos, and he is in black and gray armor that go all the way up to his jawline. I'm going to look around the room to see if I can find the the person I'm supposed to be meeting. Um, you're awaiting um, kind of a message at this point, and um, at this time, you do hear a notification uh, go off as a, a voice kind of call comes through um, from none other than the one who sent you here. Uh, do you answer it? Yes. Sorry. 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 Um, so you answer this call, and as you do so, a voice that has been um, kind of altered and changed very vastly, um, so that way you cannot even, no one else could really tell who it is, um, comes through. And this voice says, are you at the spot? Yeah, I'm here. Well, I'm sending you over the map now. And uh, remember, you're not to be seen at all, period. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, well, the man you're looking for, once you arrive at the checkpoint, is going to be dressed in normal Promethean armor. I want you to head there and meet with him. Your code word on the meeting will be play or slay. Mostly you can probably twist this into some kind of joke if, knowing you, you could probably get away with this if you accidentally say this to the wrong person. So be sure they answer with the correct response, which is to kill or not to kill. Okay. I think I can remember that. All right. I mean, I'm pretty sure. Uh, uh, just don't fuck up this time, and it turns off. This time? Ugh. He always does that. At this time, um, a holographic map pops up um, coming out of your one of your eyes, and uh, you're able to see um, the underlaying of the stadium and the access point that you were supposed to go through. All right. I'm going to look around and try to find a way through the shadows um, and go as stealthily as possible. Um, you're able to, because of, you know, you kind of set up in a way to, to make sure of, of this from bef uh, before, you're able to easily find a direct path that in uh, encases your visuals so that no one may see you as you move. Okay. I continue to move to the objective point that's on the map. Um, arriving at the objective point, it seems to be some kind of ventilation system that is um, large enough to move uh, some kind of fumes they use to clean certain uh, mech and kind of sterilize some things. It seems there's some connections for some kind of thing to be attached, but you find it unlocked and able to be moved. Okay, I'll move it then. Uh, moving it, you stand before you is this large, um, big enough that you'd be able to fit in easily and have maneuverability, but you'd still have to crouch just a small bit. All right. Uh, they always send me on these ones where I have to crawl into nasty places. Jeez. And I'm going to do what I got to do and try to crawl into it. Yep. Uh, moving through the system, um, following the map that was given to you, you're able to get to a point where... Um, you know that it has a little timer on it and it tells you an exact time frame of when to go from one place to the other to kind of go around the guards and you can see little blips moving around knowing like where people are at given times if necessary or what is logged into the map system as being so. And once you are able to find the opening, you 
hop out and head to the exact meeting up meeting point whenever you get to the place however uh, the marked location and the exact time that you're supposed to be here are correct however what is not correct is there is no one in sight uh, well this isn't good uh I'm just going to make myself as um, like as hidden as possible um, in the room um, okay. and try to wait a little bit. Um, as you uh, kind of get up into the wall and in a catacorner, you kind of wait. And over a little bit of time, maybe about 10 seconds have passed, you hear a noise. Uh, can you make a um, perception check for me, please? That's going to be uh, 24. You recognize exactly what this sound is. That being the sound of multiple blades being drawn in the distance. Um, I will uh, activate my shield. Mm -hmm. So um, there's a bracer on my arm. And the top and the sides, are all they all, all pop out. And then you just see this mesh of like hexagonal um, purple energy that forms into the shield that's on my arm. And then I'm going to deploy my sword from my, uh, under my cloak, uh, my arm. I'm going to deploy my sword. It's going to come out. It's like attached to my arm and it's going to, you know, take a second to um, basically unfold and f come into my hand. And for viewers that are unaware um, of kind of, some of the things we're kind of describing here. Um, what he's currently describing right now is an actual homebrew item, um, a system of internal weapons and internal systems that has, uh, that is, as he described, he actually has a blade inside of him that is uh, non-detachable and stuff like that and can go in and out. So just to clear up some confusion. Um, and as you do so, um, you hear a singular footstep kind of attempting to sneak but you're able to still hear it moving towards your location from the point behind you it is a three-way point with the ventilation shaft you came into uh into this room from being up on the wall on the opposite side of the room the room is roughly 30 feet across i'm gonna wait until they get a little bit closer and i'm okay. gonna turn towards towards where the sound is okay as they get close enough you turn to where the sound is, and um, can you see? One second. Right. Um, you're unable to tell, but it is too late by the time it happens. Behind you, as the as the footstep comes towards you from the front end, and you're facing it. Behind you, you hear the sound of cloaks being disact uh, deactivated, and coming out of invisibility, three guards attempt to restrain you. Can you make a strength saving throw for me? Sure. <laughs> uh, that's going to be in 17. All right. Uh, you're able to break away from the two, and then you just have one arm being restrained by the last one. And as you pull and tug... Um, one of them pulls a blade out and attempts to uh, strike at you. He hits and does a total of five damage. Okay. Uh, make another strength saving throw. Or a strength check, actually. I'm sorry. Yeah. Should be the same thing. Uh, it's going to be a 15. All right. Um, with that, you're able to rip your wrist away from the um, other uh, Prometheus member. And at this time, there has been enough going on uh, in this amount of time for you to assess what's going on around you. What are grabbing you are Prometheus members. And the one grabbing you that lets go pulls out um, his uh, arm from pull, uh, tugging on you and kind of steps back before aiming his fist towards you. And uh, you see an augment shoot out of his arm and fires a dart straight in your direction. 
The first one misses. I'm going to say player slay. Player slay. Um, one of them says... Um, to kill is your destiny as he pulls a blade out and attempts to stab it through your chest. This one hits, but scrapes off your armor enough to where it doesn't go directly through your chest, doing a total of eight damage. Uh, can I react to that? Yes. Um, you can. Uh, I know we're not in full bat combat mode, but if you'd like to attack, I'll. That's that's fine. Uh, I was just going to use a reaction when you. Oh yes, yeah, of course, yeah. I know what you're trying okay. to do. Okay. So what was the roll? The the roll yep. was. A total of 18. Okay, so I'm going to um, activate shield, mm -hmm. and the shield that's on my arm is going to expand even further and encompass my whole body. Um, so it's, you know, it's quite large now. It basically is like a half of a dome that's going to cover yep. in that direction that it's going. So. You're able to knock off that attack. Um they uh from behind them down the hall you can see three more guards running your direction all right um <laughs> i'm going to uh attack them uh with my sword um, the one that's right in front of me all right um go for it Right. And at this time that you've chosen to uh, to fight a little bit, I'm going to play some music. I've been a little so preoccupied that I haven't had time to play anything. <laughs> Mission accomplished. <laughs> Just trying to get the battle music going. <laughs> there we go. Yep. A role worthy of battle it's music. That, it's in that one. It's in that one, folks. Oh, geez. All right, so um, your attack completely misses, and as it does so, you see from the other corridor, three additional Prometheus members are coming your way for a total of nine plus the one that was heading your way from the beginning. So a total of ten Prometheus members. Um, right, I'm gonna um, put up my hands and go whoa 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 ho ho hold on a second alright um, at this point they kind of like they still have their weapons drawn and they kind of back up and just wait for your uh, response uh, I don't know if everyone heard me but I said player slay one of them replies Oh, we heard you. Yeah. Y you know what that means, right? It means you're who we're here to kill. No, it, it means... That's the thing in, in Clash. You don't know that? It's the thing in Clash where you, you kill the other person. You guys don't watch Clash, do you? And a as you say this, um, the ones from the back get up. And uh, they have kind of surrounded you in a format that allows you to... Um, have some space between you and them but they have completely surrounded you but as you kind of look around you do see that the way they surrounded you is to guard you from the main entrances leaving the way you came in open I'm going to um, uh, I'm going to back up and say hey can't we all just be friends and I'm going to cast friends on them and all right and just like slowly back up and get closer and closer until I'm close enough that I could hop in. You gonna post that? Oh yeah. There you go. <laughs> um, you attempt to cast friends. But, unfortunately, because they are already hostile towards you, this does not work. 
And as you do so, they kind of laugh, um, one of them being able to recognize what you're attempting to do. And um, But you are able to back up. You feel your back bump against the wall, and you can feel the uh, the ledge from which you came in. All right, and then I'm just going to hop in. All right. Make a um, acrobatics check for me real quick. I was hoping you might say that. Oh, really? Uh, I was hoping I would roll better than a, a four, uh, eight total. All right. Um, you kind of hobble your way up into it, giving them enough time to kind of react. The one who shot the dart at you attempts to shoot another one. That one misses, but two additional guards also are attempting to do the same thing. The second one hits. I'm going to activate shield. What was the roll on that one? Um, it was a total of 20. Okay, I'm going to activate shield on that one. Um, Alright. The third one, as you finally clobber into it, or, uh, cobble, or hobble your way up into it, excuse me, um, also barely hits, which, whenever you take the damage, that's a total of... It does a total of... I'm sorry to say this, but eight damage with a <laughs> DOT, you start feeling something spreading through your system. Okay, eight, eight damage total? Eight damage with a, um, with a status effect where you take three points of damage every turn, every six seconds. Ugh. For the next minute. Okay... Um, I'm gonna just continue to try to get away to yeah. climb in. Um, there, you're able to put a decent bit of space as you you know run and uh, dodge your way through all these little uh, ventilation corridors and stuff. And as you kind of go through, you can hear them coming after you. Um, some of them are starting to close in, and. With that, we're going to shift our focus once again. Oh, perfectly ended with the music. I was wondering why you asked me my hit points before the thing started. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you can't you can't kill someone the first episode, Zeus. That's like a DM rule. That's is it though? We're changing the rules. Jeez. Um, so now now we're going to um shift focus over to um back at the gala um, while all this was happening um, Eris and uh, Dawn are able to um, one second I totally um, let me turn this off um, Dawn and Eris you're able to from the scene that occurred earlier at the gala you're able to notice Sir Perrier um, near the balcony area, um, getting in his altercation with Frisbee. Um, how well did I hear it? And uh, do do I recognize? She's been talking about superior, superior, but do I recognize the shouting as being him? Um, you do hear whenever um, the other guy yells his name, and also. Uh, Dawn is going to be tugging on you and kind of like pointing you in that direction because she recognizes his voice. Um, what did what did he look like again? Can you just remind me? Yeah, he um he has a like a half mask on, and mm -hmm. he is a high elf. Okay, uh, how tall is he? Um, go ahead. Six foot and six foot two at his ear tips. Okay. Uh, so, um, I'm getting pulled by Don, uh, towards Sir Perrier. Eris is going to kind of follow along as fast as his little feet can take him. And, um, once, once they get close, Don kind of, you know, pushes him forward and, and, uh, he, Eris is going to try to, you know, grab onto Sir Perrier's, uh, robe. Um, is, is he, is he on his way out or he's like standing in the corner? Yeah, I'm kind of positioned over in the corner. 
Are you, oh, you're just hanging out then? Okay, so um, Eris is just going to walk up to you and be like, uh, Sir, Sir Perrier? Yeah, what, what, what do you need? Yeah, I'm Eris, and this is my friend Dawn. Um, we were just up in, in that uh, balcony over there, and right before the gates closed down below, somebody shoved an unconscious man in a mech, and uh, we thought wait, maybe wait, you wait, could wait. help us out. What, what am I supposed to do? I mean, if he's already in the mech, we got to get him out of there. And now, right? Well, so die. so Don uh, said that you knew a way that we could get a match canceled or something like. And so... as you say this in the middle of yelling this, um, someone interrupts the whole gala for a second, and the music stops. And a man walks up and says, "Um." Well, hello, everyone. Thank you so much for coming out to the gala tonight. Um, those of you who um, know Clash well enough would understand that and recognize this person as being um, Yori Bell, which is the host for most of the Clash and also runs a talk show about Clash news. And he says, Well, thank you so much for being here, and I would love, 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 love... Yeah, I see you over there. You look great. And I would love for you all to... Take a second with me to say our awesome, 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 awesome slogan before we get this match started tonight. And as you say, the, uh, as he says this, uh, the cr uh, crowd starts roaring. The lights kind of dim, and a spotlight kind of focuses more on the um, the window balcony. And as everyone kind of turns that way in um, out the balcony and on the uh, stadium field, you see the holes in the ground where the mechs come up start to open and everyone just starts cheering and cheering and cheering and he says um who and everyone yells it who will will burn and everyone yells burn together and everyone starts cheering and as they say that the mechs finally get to the top and you see um Eris and Dawn you see the mech that you saw earlier with the man that you was being put in there. The same mech from that is one of the mechs. And the announcer then goes, Tonight we have a great show for you as this special show before the season starts. And I just want to let everyone know that this is going to be something that you're going to want to talk about for days. And everyone just starts cheering and uh, music starts up by Zeke. Um, and as this happens, um, the other mech gets fully to the top, and Sir Perrier, you recognize this mech to be that of the one that defeated you in battle. Look, look, we, uh, so, we, we gotta get that guy out of there. Uh, and you're sure, you're sure he's unconscious, right? You're not pulling my leg, you're not trying to trick me, are you? Listen, listen, 100%, we both saw it. I'm a, I have really good vision. We saw it 100%. He's unconscious. He's banged up. He's in trouble. Shit. Well, if we, if we could um, maybe make our way through the access tunnels, get, get out on the field. They can't have the match while there's people on the field. And um, as this is starting to go, um, the mech, he goes, three, two, one. And the mechs just start blasting off and to your surprise the mech that that you guys are discussing is actually moving as if it is being piloted what 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 the hell is this the mech's moving are you lying to me i have enough trouble listen in this party i, I don't already. know what's going on prometheus has something to do with this maybe he's getting remote controlled or something we gotta get him out dude he's gonna die Look, I, I can see if I know some of the old security. Maybe they'll let me onto the field, but we got to move now. How far and is I'll... the how far is the drop from the uh, the the edge of the the platform with the parties at uh, down to where the mechs are fighting? Um, there's a glass pane. Um, it looks decently thick, but not so thick that you couldn't completely break it with something. Um, but the the drop is maybe about 15 feet to the nearest ledge. So the there's a so it's like a, a like a wall and then a big glass pane where we can kind of look down and see the mechs down below. Yep. Is that what we're looking at? So okay. it's like so it's like the wall the whole wall is glass, if that makes any sense on the balcony area. 
Okay, uh, Eris is gonna kind of like, you know, take stock of all this and look at uh, Dawn and uh, Sir Perrier and, and say, uh, so look, we don't have time to go down into the tunnels and do all this. That guy's gonna die. And uh, as you say this, um, you hear the crowd start roaring as you hear a, a hit land and the announcer yells, Oh, Riker hits a blow! Yeah, uh, we gotta figure out a way to get down there, like, ASAP. Uh, so, any well, ideas, can, I'm open. Unless you can pull an exit out of your ass, I think we're gonna have to go through that glass. And I'll start making my way through the crowd towards this glass, um, and I'll, I'll, I'll uh, start the process of unhinging my uh, uh, crossbow in my arm. Just a couple of pins, and it folds out. Um... Eris is going to turn to Don and kind of see what Sir Perrier is doing and say, all right, all right, Don, we're going to need a big distraction. Just kind of uh, follow my lead as we get clo closer to the glass. And uh, yeah, as Sir Perrier, it looks like Sir Perrier is just going to barrel right through the glass as he gets close without kind of paying attention to anything. Uh, not exactly. He, he's moving determinedly and uh, slowly, not, not running fully, but uh, moving. Okay. Um, so uh, Eris is going to kind of like start backing up and with Don in front of him and he's going to start backing up slowly and talking real loud and be like, uh, listen, listen, sweetie, I, I didn't know you two were related at the time. And he's like backing up real slowly and he's kind of like looking for, for any kind of objects behind him. Um, um, yeah, roll a perception check for me real quick. And as okay. you are looking for this and attempting this, um, you hear another hit land and some O's are heard um, from the crowd as uh, this time the announcer yells, What is this? Ripper is actually charging his hammer! Uh, 14 perception. Um, looking around, there's so many bodies around you. You're able to see some stuff like the, you know, like the high top tables and in chairs, but they don't necessarily look completely sturdy enough. Most of them are made with like um, some forms of glass or weird uh, objects or weird materials. Okay, Eris is still kind of like backing away from Dawn and trying to be like, come on, Dawn, like whispering real quiet, like, all right, come at me like you're gonna like hit me or throw me or something. Um, and uh, he's at, still backing up, like making a big scene as this, loud as he can. Yeah, no problem. Uh, at this time, Dawn is actually going to turn to Sir Perrier and ask, um, do you think this is similar to your battle? Um, I, 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 I don't have time to answer that right now. She says, we she says if together. that's because if that's the case and she's starting to scream, then that means we have less time than you think. And as she says this, an explosion is heard from the the middle of the arena and as everyone looks out nothing is said because the explosion as you turn and look as the smoke kind of clears people start ooing and aahing and people are asking questions and of concern as you look and Riker the, the mech they were referring to that you were talking about is now completely blown in bits just pound my fist on the nearest table God. <laughs> Not again. Um, and the music suddenly stops. And as it does so, the lights all come on and start flashing, actually, this time. And the announcer isn't even speaking. But before anyone has any time to react, um, a loud, booming voice can be heard as a man dressed in a Prometheus outfit stands up onto the stage and says... All right, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt this, but we have a cause for concern. Now, don't, don't freak out or anything, but I need everyone to look around. And as he says this, images start popping up and spreading all around the room. We have three possible terrorists in this location that we think are having to do with the explosion that just occurred. We were reviewing the footage and found some stuff going on about tampering with the mech, but unfortunately, we were not able to stop the battle in time. And as he does this, the images popping up are of Eris, Dawn, 
and a purple a purple glowing person with um, gray and black armor um, that you do not recognize. Uh, uh, Don, we should get out of here uh, as fast as possible, uh, but slowly. Uh, so as not to bring attention, but very quickly. And if you have like a tray or a plate to put in front of your face, that would be great. And as you're saying this, um, you hear a familiar voice as um, some people spread out to uh, accommodate the person going. Oh, I, I should have knew from the start, Perry, that you'd be the one around these type of folk. And he points out, and everyone looks over and sees the three of you together. And he says, I bet that you had something to do with it, too, didn't you? Frisbee, unless you got facts, you better shut up now. I don't want anything to do with these guys any more than anybody else in this room does. Uh, yeah, me me and my wife uh, were just arguing about, a, you know, a disagreement with her sister. We, uh, nothing to do here. Um, at this point, um, the Prometheus, uh, members start pouring through the doors that, uh, out of the entrance and l looking around, there are a few, uh, um, exits and stuff like that for the cooks and stuff like that. But other than that, everyone is seeming to start spreading apart, making room for these, uh, um, Prometheus members heading your way. God damn it, Don. And Eris puts his hands up. Uh, I, I suppose I'm going to try to move away from them. Uh, I'm going to try to not be a part of this <laughs> problem as much as possible. Um, as as you guys kind of like start backing up and spreading apart, um, Frisbee once more iterates as the Prometheus members get near him that Perrier did have something to do with this, and he knows that he knows the purple guy. Can I, uh, oh, I don't know what I want to do. I, I, I suppose I'm going to start running towards the nearest exit. I'm not getting caught by these guys. Um, as you, uh, as you start, uh, looking around, uh, everyone roll a perception check for me who's involved. Um, and as, while this is happening, um, I'm going to change a little bit of focus here, uh, just slightly across the room, very, uh, is watching all this unfold and in front of your face in front of your uh what you can see varia a very odd occurrence happens where you see for a small second some glitching pixelations and a message in front of your very eyes that says help them follow them What? Did I have too much to drink? No, I, I haven't. And I look over to the clutter with all the Promethean guards. Mm -hmm. I look back to my table. I grab one more drink, toss it back, and then I slip into the crowd to get as close as I can without getting noticed. Um, as you as you get closer, uh, what does everybody roll? Twenty two. Six. I got a six. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so Don and Superior are looking around, and there's just so much going on at the same time. They can't seem to see anything exact. Um, however, Eris, you do see um, one of the doors that are kind of close for the uh, kitchen area where they bring out the food is roughly 25 feet away from where you are currently. Uh, and where, where are the Promethean guards and how many are there? Um, from what you can see, there's roughly, I would say, six guards on each side filing through the crowd, so a total of 12. <clears throat> okay. And they're then um, they're roughly like uh, in terms of space from you. They're uh, they're only 150 feet out. The, the nearest one on each side is or the nearest one on your side of the room is about 150 feet out. 
how is this how is this room being lit? You said it was pretty tall and uh, is it, it's a pretty big room. How's it being lit? Um, it's being lit currently by flashing like red lights. Uh, not very dark. It's not like dark and red. It's more like a bright red with normal lights on while it's flashing uh, to get everyone's attention. Um, there doesn't seem to be a specific source of light that is shining everywhere, but um, from what you can tell, there are kind of like uh, Magitech lights located throughout um, in all the different areas of the ceiling. Okay, Eris is going to kind of, um, he's going to take take out his uh, light crossbow. It's just going it, to, it comes, he holds out his right arm and it kind of forms on the top of his right arm and he can point it and shoot it as he wants. Uh, he's going to look at the brightest uh, source of light um, using whatever knowledge he has to, to make an assumption about, you know, whichever is the biggest one. Yeah. Um, and he's going to grab Dawn with his other hand and start pulling her towards the kitchen as he shoots a crossbow bolt at uh, whatever the brightest light is. All right. Um, make an attack roll for me. Uh, 23. Um, as you make the, uh, the shot for it and kind of grab her and start running... Uh, your shot actually pierces the um, the light and causing it to sh explode and everyone kind of like screams and uh, covers their eyes and stuff, giving you a slight moment of movement um, through the crowd where they're not exactly blocking your way. So Eris is going to grab Dawn and be like, come on, let's go. We, we got a way out over here. And he's going to start pulling her towards the kitchen. Um, at the same time, he's going to see if he can sense uh, Fluffy. Um, you can sense, uh, Fluffy out, uh, from what last you could tell, he, uh, you had him kind of stow himself in one of the hallways near where the gala is taking place. He's a little bit down the hall, but, um, he's not in the room you're heading towards exactly. Okay, he's, he, uh, he's gonna try to see if he can, um, send kind of, some kind of message to Fluffy with his Ava, like, meet us around and then give him a general idea of the kitchen area. Um, you're unable to do so, but okay. Um, whenever you attempt to, there's no response. And Got whenever okay. you head, uh, you get to the door. Um, what is everyone else doing? I see them heading towards the kitchen, and I'm going to continue to follow, trying to not be seen in all of the commotion. Uh, I'm going to try to find the path of least resistance through the crowd to the nearest exit. So probably that kitchen door. All right. Um, so you head uh, right behind them, Superior, and they're able to kind of push their way and make their way through the crowd to some degree. Um, whenever you finally get to the door, um, you swing it open, and looking in there, there's just a handful of uh, ba basically banquet workers just back there pre uh, preparing food and kind of moving stuff around. And there's a decent bit of space in the front area that you're in but behind that is the kitchen and you can see an exit on the other corner of the room <laughs> uh, i'm gonna keep moving pretty strong towards that exit uh if any of the workers decide they want to take particular notice uh maybe i'll have something to say then but uh for now yeah all right um at this time we're going to um shift our focus again uh, back to our chip who is making his way, his escape uh, from these other Prometheus guard um, previously in these underground basically ventilation systems. So as you're kind of working your way through those, you get to a point where while you're doing so, you, um, you put enough space between you in them where you feel decently safe that as long as you keep pace you will not be able to be hit by them anymore but with that being said you still feel a pulsating uh, pain surging through your body every so often from that last dart that hit you um, I'm going to take a quick second to or six seconds <laughs> to cast disguise self and change my appearance um, so I no longer look like um the person that they they saw so i'm um, basically going to make it look like uh, i'm not wearing any armor 
and I have a full cloak on um, and I'm going to change my skin color and basically just look completely different. All right. Um, you do so, and as you continue through the vents, uh, you eventually get back to the mouth where you entered, and popping it open, um, you lo- looking around, there's doesn't seem to be anyone there waiting for you. Um, I am going to uh, take a closer look um, and kind of just investigate the area and see if there's if there's anything else I can hear or see. All right, roll a perception check for me. Uh, that's going to be uh, 21. All right. Um, you kind of, as you jump out, you just peer around and kind of take a, a good second to, to investigate what's around you. And uh, looking, you don't see anything specific. You see a couple people walking uh, normally through the streets. Um, but in front of you in, you know, maybe about 50 feet out, you do see some different alleys that are starting to sprawl out from the different endings of these buildings um, past the stadium and starting into one of the districts. I'm going to um, remember how close my base of operations is from here and if, if I think I can get there based on how good I'm feeling. Um, you do know that traveling back to the place you came from would roughly take five days. Uh, I will go uh, I'll walk normally just like nothing's wrong towards one of the alleys the closest one to me alright um, you start walking towards the alley and the pain continues uh, by this time um, you would have taken roughly another 12 points of damage okay <laughs> awesome alright um, you, when you get to the alley, um, you look back and you see that the, uh, if you peer around, you see the Promethean guards that were chasing you kind of getting out of the vent and looking around and start snooping. Um, but they don't seem to be exactly able to follow your trail. Um, I'm, I'm just going to sit down and kind of just lean up against the wall um, and, like, put my head down. Um, doing so, uh, you can hear them kind of running around and getting closer to you, but none of uh, none of them get too close yet, and you take some more damage. Um, you take another three. Okay. Um, in that case, I am going to have to use Strength of the Grave and... Uh, if it if I reduce to zero hit points, I make a charisma saving throw. Yep. DC five plus the damage taken. Okay. Okay, that's gonna be an eleven. So that's success. All right. So you're barely able to hang in there, um, and whenever you do so, you hear the footsteps of one of the guards getting ever so closer to you. And as he kind of walks up, he peers around the corner at you and. Uh, kind of just mocks you for being some, you know, basically homeless scum and just kind of kicks some dirt at you and then walks off laughing. And uh, you hear him radio to some one of his um, uh, other members saying that uh, he wasn't in that location. Um, I'm going to look to see if I can see anyone walking down the street from the alley. Um... Um, are, you, are you saying from the the opposite like the direction you were heading or the direction you're coming from the direction i'm coming from just if there's any anyone at all that i can see um after just entering the alley um you can't see anybody in that direction however um you do hear some footsteps coming from the direction you were heading down the alley a little further around a bend and as you hear these footsteps um, they get a little closer and a little closer and you see a one second you see a um, the first thing you see is an, a Hawaiian shirt and it's orange but as you see this you take another three points of damage 
Okay. Well, I am knocked out then. Um, you go unconscious, unable to assess what the figure actually is and who it is. So as you go unconscious, um, we shift our gaze once more to another individual. A stout dwarf walking through um, the streets um, a little time before this, wearing his signature unbuttoned orange Hawaiian shirt and with an augmented arm and a worn-out first aid kit strapped over his shoulder, walks through the crowded streets, drinking out of a beer bottle. Your mic, Crackery. It's all right. <laughs> Sorry. Gonna need, a, gonna need a PDL light tonight. <laughs> um, as you say this, uh, you and you alone hear uh, the voice of your companion saying, I told you not to eat so much, or not to drink so much last night, and you're going to follow it up with more? Mm-hmm. <sighs> yep. Just like I always do. Fuck. <sighs> You know, I didn't choose you so I could f follow you around with your drinking escapades. I, We haven't even helped anyone in the last week. What are you doing with yourself? We, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll help them when they, when they need help. Don't worry about it. Uh, oh, there's some Prometheus members heading around this street corner. Just take a right here into this alley. All right, yeah. I need to piss anyway, thanks. Um, <sighs> You turn the alleyway and start heading down um, this, uh, heading down to the uh, right. And as you do, you um, kind of continue until it bends a little bit. And uh, just as you kind of prepare yourself to use the restroom, um, you look over and your fellow companion says, do you see that? Oh, the dude lying there? Yeah. I, this, is he okay? You might want to check on him. He looks fine. I, I'll, I'll check on him. <clears throat> All right. Hey, bud. How you doing? Um, um, the unconscious chip does not respond. Hmm. Unconscious, but looks fine otherwise. Though, wait a minute. Hmm. Um, don't... Make a medicine check for me. Hmm. It's eleven. Um, kind of like checking him out. Um, you notice there is some blood and stuff staining his armor, but removing a little bit of it to get a better look. Um, Ava, uh, excuse me, not Ava. Um. Your companion kind of stops you and says, I'm picking up that he has some kind of poison running through his system, but I think he's unconscious from that, honestly. Hmm, interesting. Alright, uh, let's do this thing. And as you open, in, um, open it up, uh, his armor, the thing that you see that catches your eye is his armor race augment mod is not one that is normal standard issue it is something that is completely made separately and contained in, uh, by someone outside of Prometheus and hers reach ah we got some black market goods here I see right. um, ah. your companion chimes in saying perhaps we should take him back to the shop hmm all right <sighs> fine all right but I'll I'll stabilize him here so I don't have to carry his ass all right and I'll cast spare the dying on him all right um, you do so successfully and he regains um, or he's, he's stabilized and uh, you're able to kind of work him up on you Help him out. I, sla I slap his face a little. Hey, bud. How you doing? 
Um, he still uh, does not gain consciousness. Mm. All right. However, you can tell the damage um, the damage that is being taken to him, your companion informs you, it seems that it has stopped spreading, but it is still in critical condition and that you need to get him back as soon as possible. Uh, all right. For my next trick, I'll try a little cure wounds. Um, as you cast cure wounds, uh, the uh, the damage done on the inside of his chest area and the inside of his body where all the poison is being spread seems to clear up for the most part and Chipper gains consciousness. Oh, oh hey, bun. Oh. Uh, uh, who are you? Hey, welcome to heaven, man. Uh, I'm the I'm the guardkeeper here. A gatekeeper here. Uh, how's uh, how you doing? What's heaven? What are you uh, talking about? Chip, you hear a voice chime out and say, "Oh, s- stop with the jokes. He needs help." All right, all right, yeah, fine. Hey, man, uh, I just I just helped you out here. Um, but uh, you got a little bit of that uh, poison stuff in you now. But I, you should be fine. Uh, just uh, make sure to stay hydrated. You know, all the all that stuff. Well, okay. Why did you help me? Uh, call it, uh, call it, uh, goodwill. Um, That's for you, bud. And, uh, as, as he says this, um, the voice that you hear, Chip, gives off a very upset sigh at this <laughs> being said. Um, she says out loud to, uh, you as well, Chip. I honestly think that you need to come back with us to our shop. We're not going to do anything weird to you, but um, you seem to have some kind of poison that's acting and reacting with your race argument a little weird. I would normally be able to assess the issue, but because you have black market parts, I can't really help quickly. You, You looked at my race argument? Oh, we, uh, we looked at a lot of things. Oh, man. <laughs> she says, well, she warns you that if um, if you kind of go without any attention in the next day, that um, the condition might come back and you might find yourself unconscious on the ground once more. Okay. Uh, I don't have any way to heal myself. And uh, I don't know anyone around here. Uh, all right. I don't really have a choice, I guess. All right, we can, uh, we can keep you, uh, we can keep you stabilized and ha- and heal you up back at back at our place. But we're we're gonna have to be subtle about this, all right? Okay, I can do I that. Just say, I just say you're not the only one that'll uh, upset her if she finds out. Uh, her? How long have you been out? Um. No, sorry. No. Uh, yeah, of course. Her. All hail. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'll. That one. Uh, uh, hold on a second. Let me not look like this anymore. Uh, I'm um, gonna disguise myself. As you as you do that, um, Crackery, you are. I'm sorry. Um, Scrat, you alone are uh, able to hear uh, your companion say, "Well, that is unusual." Mm-hmm. Highly. Well, uh, you said you wanted to be discreet about it. I figured if I looked like I was dying, it wouldn't be very discreet. Hmm. Let's see here. When did when did you get injured? Actually, uh, I, I don't know. I kind of blacked out there for a while. Hmm. Were you like this when whatever happened to you, or were you before? I. I was like when you found me. Mm, that could be too subtle, I imagine. If whoever did this to you is still out there. Mm. But uh, put 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 another disguise on. How about yeah? Okay. <laughs> so I'm gonna just change it up. I'm I'm gonna put on um I'm gonna see his Hawaiian shirt and I'm gonna put on a Hawaiian shirt too. 
Excellent choice. <laughs> Thanks. Um, your companion sighs out loud audibly to both of you, even louder this time. Um, and uh, as you guys make your way towards your, uh, basically your workshop, uh, Scrat, um, we're going to shift our gaze back to the ongoing situation at the gala with Sir Perrier, Eris, Don making their way into the kitchen while Varia attempts to follow closely behind. Um, so as you guys open up into the kitchen, um, you're able to make most of the way through there, but there are multiple doors to this kitchen, and as you're doing that, uh, as you're making your way across the room, some of the Prometheus guards are able to go through some of the other doors, um, and kind of get into the room and kitchen as well, and it, they're probably about 30 feet away from you when they open the, the, the first set of doors. Um, and you guys are maybe about 10 feet away from, uh, or the first person, which would be, um, I believe it's Ares, correct? Uh, sure. Unless, uh, well, Sir Perrier was probably going for the door too. Yeah, I think and he's he went... probably faster than me. Uh, he might be faster, yeah. That's yeah. Probably. Yeah, so... I, I think I left a little bit earlier than you as well. Yeah. All right. Well, then we'll say Sir Perrier <laughs> is up in front. Um, so the closest one to you, Sir Perrier, is uh, the door is roughly 10 feet away. The, the closest one's like 25, 30 feet away. Um, to everyone else, though, uh, the rest of the group, um, Eris and Don, are both roughly uh, 15 and 20 feet away from the door. Varia, you're, you're just able to get up to the doorway um, near the kitchen, and you can see where they're going. However, you do know that if they go th continue through this kitchen, because you are familiar with this area, having been a guest at this gala multiple times, you know that this will eventually lead to an exit um, further down the hallway if you go out the main doors. So the door that they're going through will lead to a full exit? Yeah, basically, you know that there's like a, a roundabout way to go where they're going to end up, is what I'm saying. Okay, so I'm going to take that roundabout way so I'm not, like, directly following them because I don't fully want them to know that I'm following them. Okay. Um, you don't have to roll a sneak or anything like that because I'm, I'm you're probably trying to blend in more so at this point than sneak. Um, so you kind of start making your way out the front door, and no one really bats an eye at this. Um, and while this is happening, um, Sir Perrier, um, the first guard that comes through the doorway... Um, is heading your way and he attempts to tackle you as you start to open up the door in the, the second door All right so uh, in his attempt to tackle me is he uh, able to do so or uh, if I uh, pull away um, just I was more so waiting to see kind of like what your reaction to it was going to be um, and yeah then, yeah my yeah. apologies no you're good uh, so what we're going to do is uh I think I'm going to burst through the, Just keep trying to burst through the door. I, I, I want to try to peel away from him, yeah. So that'll be with disadvantage on his part, then. Um, he's trying to... Uh, so he's trying to make a basically a grapple. So if you want to roll me a um, strength check. Uh, well, that's not going to be... That's a 11. Um, luckily... He, uh, you beat his rollout. So, um, as he attempts to grapple you, um, as you run through this door, um, he's only able to kind of grab your leg and you shake it off. Um, following closely behind Don and Eris, you're able to kind of just push through the door and kind of step, jump over this guy as you get through the doorway and shut it. Um, Dawn, um, looks behind her and sees that there is a lock on this door. So she goes ahead and locks it. Um, before you guys continue. And right now you're in a stairwell that leads um, down and up, which, Sir Perrier, you do know that going down would obviously mean going towards the bays, while going up would probably mean going out of the stadium. Yeah, I'll, I'll begin making my way up the stairs, and as I'm doing so, I'm going to kind of look back at uh, the two following me, and what the hell exactly did you just drag me into? Listen, we d we had nothing to do with it. Uh, we got these tickets and we showed up and, and we just saw what we saw. We're reading straight with you, man. Well, then... Go <laughs> no away out well, of here. Uh, 
upwards is going to get us away from them. And that's all I know. It's been a long time since I've been around here. All right. Well, upwards sounds good. Let's do it. So you guys all start mm-hmm. running up the stairs. And as you do so, Dawn keeps um, kind of like uh, saying outwards to uh, directed at Superior that um, she, she's basically kind of like shyly saying like, I, w- I would never do that to you. Like, I, I respect you too much for that. But, like, she's, like, saying this as she's, like, hustling up the stairs and, like, kind of softly. So it's a little hard to make out every once in a while. Um, and as you get up to the the point where it uh, opens up, um, you bust through the door. And uh, looking around, there doesn't seem to be any Prometheus guards there yet. All right, which way do we go now? Uh that's a really good question. I was hoping you could fill me in on that a little bit. Uh, pick a direction and go. At this point, um, uh, Varia, you have actually kind of, when you get away from the uh, the people in the front, um, you're able to kind of move at a much quicker pace. And because of the short, like you're knowing your way around these uh, areas, you're able to get to the entrance uh, that they bust out of the stairwell um however i um i assume uh you are a decent bit away yeah okay um so you see them kind of bust out the this doorway and you hear them actually say that um i'm gonna put the rainbow hood of my dress up and over my head and i'm going to approach them uh hey so I feel like I should help you, um, and I know my way out, so... Well, no more wasting time. How about you lead us out of here now? All right, let's go. Um, Dawn kind of goes, how, how do we don't know... How how do we not know that she's not one of them? And she kind of, kind of like, gestures. She, like, we just... She just showed up. Yeah, I know. But uh, you know what? If she was a guard, we'd already be done. Also, guards do not look as good as this. And uh, Keep patting yourself on the back, darling. And with this, you all make your way towards the exit. Um, you take them around to a side exit um, and that you normally take out whenever you don't want the press or paparazzi or any kind of fans like coming after you after events. And um, doing so, you head out and are able to make your way onto the street. Um and with that, we are going to have our intermission. So we're going to stop right there and uh, have our little break here. Um, so for everybody who's joined us so far, thank you so much. Um, again, it was a slow, slow start, but I hope it was worth it in the long run. Um, we will be right back after a few messages. So everybody, again, thanks for being here. Um, if you haven't already, hit that uh, follow button and you'll be able to get notifications on any of the other streams, including party foul and some cool other ones coming up in the near future um so with that um we'll be back in just a few minutes welcome back um i hope you guys have been enjoying the show so far um with that being said uh there was one small thing that we kind of got a little wrong i got a little wrong personally um the heiress's character is actually a halfling, not a dwarf. I'm sure somebody corrected that, but uh, I just want to make sure that everyone understands. Um, but with that being said, let us dive back in. Um, and I do also want to uh, do one more announcement. If anybody who's a sub uh, wants to stick around after the show, we're going to have... Uh, normally we have like a little wind-down period after the show. Um, us specifically, we're going to have like a 15 minute, 10 to 15 minute, uh, break. But then after that, any subs that want to come join us in chat to talk about the show, ha- ask questions about characters, stuff like that, um, with the cast. And, uh, we might have a special guest. Uh, I don't know who that could be. Um, that will be also after the show, um, in the discord. So if you're a sub, make sure you stick around, hang out and come talk to us. So once more, let us return to the members as they exit the stadium. Um, my camera's been bothering me. I'm going to move it a little bit. All right. So you guys head out into uh, into the street. Um, and uh, so, so what's next? Okay. So 
We're out. Yeah. Where are we going now? Mm -hmm. It's a very uh, let, let's uh, let's walk and talk, people. Walk and talk. Got to keep it moving. They're going to come after us. Um, Lead the I way, agree. little man. Um, well, I don't know where we're going. Uh, Don, I know you've got a place, uh, but I mean, we both work for Clash kind of, so it's probably best if we don't go back to our places. Uh, any of you guys have a safe place we can stay? I might know a place. And as you're and saying a this, um, a vent that's, or like kind of a vent area uh, near the exit kind of starts rattling and you hear like the, the little squeaking of some kind of insect from inside. Eris, you recognize this. Uh, the Fluffy! Fluffy over here! Fluffy! Uh, um, the vent gets shoved out and out comes a giant spider. And hey, come here, Fluffy! Come on! And Fluffy right, hey, runs hey. up straight to Eris and starts uh, giving him little spider smooches. Uh, Eris uh, starts, like, petting Fluffy's face. Uh, uh, hit the side of his spider face and it's like, alright, alright, Fluffy. Hey, we, we don't have a lot of time. Come on, just follow. Uh, let me let me hop on real quick. And uh, Eris is gonna... Um, Fl Fluffy kind of uh, lowers the legs on one side of her body and Eris kind of, like, scooches his way to the top of of the spider body and uh, is is gonna ride the spider. All right, all right, guys, let's let's go. Yeah, and I'll I'll start moving towards a certain mech bar that I know of. Um, as you guys start heading in that direction, um, you get to where the uh, district line uh, kind of starts, and you start moving into the alleyways and the streets. And um, at this point. Um, you guys are getting into an area with some buildings when you see in the distance um, coming around a corner is a specific um, odd pair of people one wearing an orange Hawaiian shirt and the other one wearing another Hawaiian shirt. I don't. I don't even know the color. Actually, what, what color? Pur a purple Hawaiian shirt. Um, and as they step out, it seems as though the one with the purple one is a little bit roughed up and kind of walking a little awkwardly. Um, oh. With that, uh, uh, Chip, um, because of the. Uh, the poison inside your body um something occurs uh for a split second and your um your form that you've taken starts to kind of shudder a little bit and as you guys are looking at these uh two people you see this and the form changes shifts between what he looks like currently and that of the picture you saw in the gala one of the chances do you see that guys yeah i see him all right I'm going to give him a wide berth myself. I don't know about you. Um, at this, uh, Varia, you see a scene, um, an image very similar to that, what you saw in the gala, saying, join them. I, I know that you want to give them a wide berth, but we need to be with them. We need to get closer. With, with the, the terrorist. I don't... That's... We don't, Listen, are you, you saw my picture up there too, and I'm not a terrorist. We didn't do anything. You, you say that. I don't know you. You've just got to, you're going to have to trust us, man. <sighs> um, okay. in the mud. And while what? you guys are having this conversation, Scrat and Chip, as you guys kind of peek out around this corner, um, Chip, you do start noticing this happening. And Scrat, whenever you see him starting to do this, you look past him for just a brief second, and you recognize someone. It is someone that you have previously worked on in the past, and that is Sir Perrier, standing in the distance. Oh, I, 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 listen, I, I, um, I know that fellow over there. He's a, used to be a famous Clash player. I, I actually, um, helped him out, helped him out one time, but I, are you okay, dude? What, what happened with all that? Are you, are you going to be fine? You think? Uh... Uh, I'm not really sure what's going on. Honestly, I've never really been hurt before. So this is new to me. Mm, interesting. All right, let's just try to stay low here. All right. Okay. 
Um, Sir Perry, you're, you see uh, the man kind of notion towards you for a second as you guys are discussing uh, their possible terrorist tendencies. Yeah, uh, I guess uh, we're already in the mud and going to get much worse than it already is. Just That just guy's the... pointing at me, though. Do you have any idea who that is? No, but does it matter? I we need to join them. I I don't trust anyone except myself, and I know that I need to join them. Well, I'm already up to my neck in mud. May as well dive under. Um, Don just looks uh just kind of like taken back by this and kind of nugs uh nudges at Eris and says is this going to be a good idea look we're we're in trouble and uh he's in trouble too and if people in trouble stick together we'll, we'll, we'll get out of it somehow so uh yeah let's see see what they're up to and see if they can come with us help us out um <laughs> as you uh as you say this um you guys have made it a decent bit in um you do notice um scrat uh that your companion kind of comes into your mind once more and says i i can tell that the prometheus activity in the area is getting sporadic again but it doesn't seem to be like it was before they it seems like they're looking for something different this time do you do, do you know what they're looking for um are they I, looking for this guy i i'm i'm not exactly sure hmm. all right well keep an eye on that all right keep an eye on what dutch that never mind oh okay just All right. Um, so as you guys are uh, kind of having this awkward moment of two groups kind of like semi moving in the same direction, um, everyone roll a perception check for me real quick. Ooh, nat twenty. Nine. Nine. Twelve. That's a nineteen. Um. Superior, you notice the um, that in the background, behind, in the direction that you were coming from, you can hear the sound of some footsteps that sound a little sporadic. Uh, it sounds as if though someone's running around in some area semi close to here, just very faintly in the background. I don't know what's going on, but I don't like the sound of it. There's somebody moving around real quick behind us. Why don't we get out of this uh, open area and into an alley? How far are we away from your safe place? Look, don't worry about that. We'll get there when we get there. For now, let's worry about getting out of sight. And uh, yeah, if you want to join those guys, we better grab them before uh, whatever's going on happens. I run over to the other two guys and grab the arm of Scrat and just start dragging him. Whoa, whoa, hey, hey, what do you, what do you, what do you want, lady? Just get over here. What? <laughs> hey, hey, I don't, I, I don't know you or well, I mean, uh, we can get to know each other, uh, but uh, now's now's not the no, time for this. No. Right. Okay, but. just people running, alley, hide, go now. Good enough. I just, no, um, but, uh, uh, your but, companion says into your ear I, I think you should listen to her the activity is getting a little too close for comfort if you well, if you say so man. Hey, if hey, I say what hey you well, let's let's hey, let's hang out with this this girl man uh, she, my uh, uh, I have a good feeling about her uh, yeah okay and enough talking go um and as you guys kind of uh collapse into their group and you all start making your way towards um 
a nearby alley. Not the one that uh, Chip and Scrat came out of, but one that's further down as you guys were kind of moving during this whole um, conversation. You get to a point where you feel as if uh, you've moved enough and kind of dip into an alley um, that kind of is dark enough to maybe take a small breather and kind of collect yourselves. I'm going to like put my back up against a wall and then slide down into like a sitting position, kind of rest my head on my knees. Is he okay? Oh, he's, he's a, he's a, a bit wounded, but uh, I, I got it covered. I'm a, I'm a doctor as you, uh, as you can see. And I, I uh, flashed the, uh, my worn out first aid kit. Okay. Um, why was he, why was he flickering like that? Uh, your guess is as good as mine. I'm Idiot. gonna walk over <laughs> to Chip and kick him. Oh, why were you flickering like that? I, I can disguise myself, and I don't, I don't know. It's just not working properly. I guess. I, I really don't know what's going on. I'm really confused, and I'm, I kind of passed out, and I just woke up. All right, I've I've had nights like that, so we're hiding. What are we doing now? Uh, Eris mm -hmm. is gonna uh, get down uh, from Fluffy and kind of uh, whistle uh, and point up, indicating that Fluffy should kind of keep watch over the area. And uh, he's gonna walk up to Chick Chip and uh, look down and be like, "Yeah, you you don't look so good, buddy. Uh, you need some." Some help, some patching up. Uh, yeah, we were heading back to. What was your name again? God, I'm I'm Eris. Eris, we're heading back to this guy's place with the stylish shirt. Um, I didn't catch his name. I don't think. Uh, how many of you guys are there? Uh, name's Scrat, by the way. Oh, hi, Scrat. How's it going? Yeah, I'm I'm doing, doing good. good. Uh, um. Yeah, we're we're heading back to so they could fix me up. I I think I'm poisoned. Um, uh, let me let me see if there's anything I can do, and um, I'm gonna kneel down and cast cure wounds on him. All right. Um. <clears throat> so go ahead and tell that roll. Um, and as this is happening, uh, Scrat, uh, your companion also kind of, uh, kind of sighs at you, and then broadcasts her voice to everyone else. And as you all can hear this, you hear a voice um, say to you all, "Listen, do you? Yeah, wait, wait, wait. Hold on. I uh, this this may be weird. I I I'm inside of Scrat. Uh, not like." That, that just listen i know that uh something's going on with prometheus so why don't we get a better picture here what are they looking for do you know <laughs> yeah i got a few ideas and i'll point at uh chip scrat and uh his companion hey you're you're or not I, scrat I i'm sorry <laughs> Harris. Hey, Harris. You're that you're you're that clash guy, the Sir uh, Perrier or something. No, it was stupider than that. It was, um, <laughs> was. was. That's uh, the right word for it. Um, Dawn kind of uh, gets a. Uh, you can see she gets a little visibly angry at Scrat and kind of uh, looks at, looks at you and kind of um, clinches a fist and states that you don't get to talk to him like that. Uh, he can talk to me any way he wants. Hell, any of you can. You're already doing it so far. But, uh, look, I think they're probably after those three. We better get out of here and quick. Uh, I know a place, but uh, it's not going to be good for us to lay down low for very long. Um, the voice will project once more and say, well, why don't you just come with us? Um, but first, before I... Normally, we only take in people that need assistance, um, like we did with you um, in the past, uh, Perrier. Um, you may not know it, but Scrat here 
was the one who patched you up after your incident with the battle. Was it that? It's been such a long time. Yeah, I hardly yeah, recognize. Yeah. You're welcome. Hey, look, uh, I, I'm never going to be able to pay you back, but uh, if uh, you ever need anything, you know I've got your back. Um, well, all, all condolences are et cetera aside, can we just determine what exactly they're looking for so we have a better understanding? Are they looking for them, or are they looking for something they did? What exactly is going on? Do they know who they are? Do they have pictures of them? Yeah, they got pictures. Oh, um, this is worse than I thought. What about this one, um, the the purple flickering one? There was a picture of him when he looks like, and I wait, that. Uh, oh, of course. Uh, well, let me ask you all, you wouldn't happen to have had your module removed from your race augment that acts as a track? King device, would you? Why are you asking? Oh, you know, maybe that might be leading them right to us as we speak, or something else. I'm not exactly sure at this point. I'm pretty sure I don't have to worry about that. (sighs) Well, what about you, uh, Sweet Cheeks? uh, Varia, wait, yes, Varia is your name, but what What about you? How do you know my name? Oh, it only takes a second to search a database, honey. You won't have to worry about that. Oh, well, yes. Do Um, you know of people that can remove them? (laughs) Remove them, yes. Uh, You're staring at one. Perfect. But find the... Go, go ahead. I flip out a I flip out a scalpel um, from my my mechanical my augmented arm. It uh, the hand uh, like comes back and then out pops like a set of tools. One of which is like a a scalpel. Another is like a magnifying glass. Um, a, a little pick. It's like um, on the other hand, finding someone who has the components needed to replace said. Module, you're not looking at one. Where is your base of operations? Well, not too far from here, where we normally do our procedures. The shop we kind of work out of is only um, about a half a day travel from here. (coughs) But I will say that it's kind of useless to go there and for very long. If you're in one spot for more than mm, 15 minutes, give or take 200 milliseconds, um, you probably would be found. At least they would have a a blip that would show them in what direction to go. Say that I know someone who knows someone that could get extra parts. Um, Well, see, knowing someone who knows someone is quite the thing, darling, but the better thing would be to go to someone who has had it done to them. This fella right here, the glitchy one, of course, um, it seems that his race augment is completely black market. I'm sure without a hundred percent or with a hundred percent certainty that whoever did that to him would surely be able to get the components we need, if not already have them. I, I don't think that's a good idea. And why not? Uh, because I I really don't want to go back there and it's it's kind of far away. <sighs> Well, I guess we could take a pit stop at our shop and maybe get you all healed up beforehand. That would be nice. 
if I can just get into the heart, I can try to track down people to get these components. Uh, well, hmm. and you, glitchy one, um, I can't find any records. You said your name was Chip? Yeah, it's, it's Chip. Are you making that up, or...? No, it's my name. <laughs> and where were you born? What's with all the questions? I can't find a speck of information on your image besides the one that are going around with Prometheus right now. That's very, very odd. And you asked who her was earlier, if I'm not mistaken. What? No, I thought they were talking about a person or something. I was kind of out of it. I didn't know they were talking about the her, you know? Well, that's... It's very... Uh, either way, where, where is this place that you wish to not go back to, is the real question. Um, it's in the Maw. What part? The edge or closer? No, it's pretty far. Oh, dear. So we like have... Five days or so. We have... Walk. Basically, our options are, after we take a step towards the southwest um, in a half a day's travel, we have a five to six day journey to the east for your location or uh, a travel to the heart which would be roughly the same in the north from that location do you see the problem here yeah it's a lot of traveling uh, having to move every 15 minutes is going to be a really big problem I probably can't move very fast either so that's not going to help. All right, well, let's just go. I think the Prometheus in this area have kind of got a little bit further away. We should have a little bit of time to move. Plus, we shouldn't stay here for too long anyway. It sounds like a good idea to me. I just need to get healed as soon as possible. This is not very comfortable. Well, I don't know who you are, but uh, I'll help you up. I'll make sure you don't fall behind anyway. Thank you. Uh, was your name Sir Perrier? Uh, don't don't bother with all that. Uh, look, uh, you know Scrat, and that's good enough for me. You can call me Perry. Okay, Perry. And I also call you Perry. Darling, I don't think me telling you not to call me it would do anything if I did. You may be right there. Scrat and whatever you are that lives inside of Scrat. Mm. Lead the way. Oh, my name. My name's Pock. I'm so terribly sorry. Y your name is what? Pock. Uh, it was... Uh, never mind. That's too long of a story. We best be on our way. And um, as you guys start to move out, uh, Dawn comes up beside uh, Sir Perrier and kind of starts twiddling her fingers and says, Can I call you Perry? Look, kid, I don't know you that well yet, but uh, maybe someday. But I know everything about you. Yeah, that's right. You know about me. I don't know you. And she kind of looks disappointed and uh, gravitates more towards Eris again. So you guys head uh, towards Scrat um, and Pock's location um, that they mentioned um, without without much of a hindrance. Uh, you, you you know make some small breaks here and there for Chip um, to kind of take a little bit of a rest, um, but not very very long. And before you know it, you've arrived at this location they speak of. Are we there yet? Oh yeah, looks we're, like it, bud. Yep, right here, man. All right, let me get the keys here, and voila, me, Mikasa, as something, something, you know, make yourself at home. Could you at least open the door before you? Oh. Does anyone, <laughs> anyone have a timer? We, we've, we've only got fifteen minutes. We should keep track of the time. I mean. 
I mean, the Ava probably take care of that for me, right? If not, uh, Scrat, you you got stuff in that house, I'm sure. Mm, got uh, medical supplies, yes. You got a clock. You got a timer. Oh yeah, yeah. Here. And... Yo, let's not let's not cut it too close. Let's say uh, you know twelve, thirteen minutes. That's all we got, and then we got to bounce. Yeah, I agree. Being on less time than more. Um, Pock kind of suggests to. Uh, chip to uh, to go into the back of the building and take a uh, lay down on basically this kind of like seat that's laid out in the uh, back room I will do that um, whenever you go in there you see that the seat has these like uh, Magitech uh, instrumentations kind of like connected all to it and stuff kind of like uh, waiting for someone to be sit down and attached with and as you uh, sit down you uh, Scrat kind of walks up in there, and he, um, as he walks through the door, um, a hologram um, kind of appears in the room and starts talking in the voice of Pock. Um, and this, this uh, basically uh, three foot uh, version of what looks almost to be like a human with uh, long flowing hair that's wavy, kind of shows up and she says if you just sit there a moment I'll I'll pet you up it should only take uh, five minutes to, to give you something that'll keep you standing for the rest of the travel okay sounds good and um, as you s- sit down and are waiting uh, all the instruments start wrapping around you and connecting up into your different augments and stuff like that and um some lights start flashing around and uh, some magic's used to heal you um, it does heal you to full health however um, she does mention that the poison will kind of reside inside your body it seems until um, we have the time to take a look at your race modifier or your race uh, augment in your chest okay well, I'm feeling a lot better so thanks um, so after this, uh, you guys probably have about four or so minutes left before, uh, the timer is going to go off. Well, Scrat, this is how you've been living all this time. Hmm? Mm-hmm. Not the greatest, but it's all mine. I'm but... still picking up stray dogs off the street, huh? <laughs> Yeah, the uh, the vo- voice in my head um, g- keeps it hard not to, you know. The voice in your head. Yeah, that uh, Pac. Um, yeah, it's it's one of those uh, you know those acronyms, you know, uh, uh, P- POC, you know, piece of crap. <laughs> um, the hologram kind of walks up and uh, basically like attempts to slap Scrat in the back of the head um, as the pixels kind of like just pass through his head and she shakes her head before saying now if only I could get you to use that enthusiasm uh, enthusiasm to clean this place and as you guys look around there's just beer bottles just scattered around and trash everywhere y- y- any of y'all want to drink by the way I... after all that yeah uh, no I think, I think I've got enough poison in me. <laughs> that you do. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll grab a drink. What you got? You got anything good? All right. Do we I... really have time for drinking? Probably only have we two have... minutes left, guys. If we got time for anything, we got time for drinking. I mean, I don't really <laughs> like care you. about <laughs> you guys other than the fact that I'm supposed to protect you, and I don't know why. Well, I got but good I, news, I sweet cheeks. Here. I don't care about you. Oh, I can stay here. I can go anywhere that I want. It's you guys who can't and you guys who are going to be tracked. So if you want to stay here and drink and possibly throw your lives away, that's on you. They aren't here yet. We still got time. I'll follow because you know where to get these parts we need. But uh, let me make something abundantly clear. I don't care about you. You don't care about me. That's fine. I don't trust anyone. Together. So your even... feet's already in it. <laughs> what do you want to do? Step back out of the shit? 
It's too um, late. It's never too late. Pock kind of steps up over your argument and says, uh, guys, um, th- thir- 30 seconds. Oh, uh, yeah, I may have miscalculated there. Um, I can tell there's a group in the near area. I'm sorry. Pit. Scrat, how do we get out? All right. Well, don't think we can go out the front way. Um, let's go out the back into the alley. Sounds um, good. good to me, Scrat. This is your house. You need to lead the way. I, I lead them over to the the back of the operating room. I open the door and out into that little alley. Um. So you guys head out into the alley. Um. And start making your way. Um. And as you do so, you hear a crash through the front window of the building as um, you hear uh, what seems to be um, faintly the sound of some kind of canister of uh, smoke or something like that starting to fill the room and spraying. That's not a good sound, guys. Yep. Time to get moving. (laughs) Um, Heading down the alley, you guys start... uh, I guess hauling it and booking it at this point. Um, oh, yeah. Whenever you guys pour out into the uh, the next street, um, unfortunately, um, the first who, who what's uh, go ahead and give me a, um, a rundown of who what's the order like who's up in front. Uh, I'd like to think that I would take point. So uh, yeah, <laughs> not to mention just running really quick. I, I'm not staying for this. Um, well, with that, um, Superior, as you kind of run down this alleyway and kind of open up, it opens up into this area that has a large kind of walkway with a fountain um, in the middle of, of an area kind of to the side. And as you kind of look around to scan the area, you notice that there is something off here. And it takes you about a couple seconds as they all catch up and get close behind you for you to realize what it is. It's the fact that there's absolutely no one here. Kind of throw up my arm behind me. Hey, hey, hey. Something's not right here. This doesn't feel good. Yeah, there's there's usually people walking around this time of uh, day. Something's weird here. Look, we can't we can't wait, but uh, let's maybe move along the sides of the building, stay close to the overhangs. Okay, I'm gonna keep into the shadows. I can do that. Um, Eris, Eris is gonna whistle uh, for Fluffy um, and uh, see if he's seen anything on the rooftops. Um, so you start scanning around, and you're able to tell that there doesn't seem to be anything on the rooftops um, but you guys kind of keep your uh, keep your eyes open and, and ears open as you kind of move along the buildings in a quick manner sorry um, and next thing you know um, before you have any time to react um, you see lights start flashing in the um distance uh, of each of the alleyways and each of the um, ends of this giant walkway. Scrat, would it be safe to say that that's not normal for this area? Uh, no. Uh, that that wouldn't be. Um, I cover my eyes like this. It's, yeah, it's it, just... is, it is very bright, yeah. Um, it starts flashing, and, and as the uh, the strobe of these lights get quicker and quicker, um, you're able to tell that they are kind of moving in on you. What's the plan, guys? I haven't, haven't seen anything like this in the simulations. Stick together and run. That's the best I got. Okay. I'm with Sounds Perry. good, Mr. Perrier. <laughs> Just take off running again um you run out uh heading towards the way of direction of the fountain from the buildings that you're uh, up against um 
And as you do so, a um, the lights grow so bright that it's just blinding. Um, and when it does, when it gets to this point of being so blinding, they all just shut off, leaving you all with um, kind of this pure blackness all around you. Um, and as your eyes adjust, you hear the crackling of something charging. Where's yeah, that in the darkness? Um, that's a good question. I have no idea. Uh, I'm going to see if I can tell which direction it's coming from. Um, you can tell that it is coming from the direction of behind. Uh, so you're heading towards this fountain. It's coming the opposite way down the main path is where you can hear it. Um, I'm going to turn around and just kind of um, put my hand out. And in the palm of my hand, it's going to start generating this uh, purple energy. And then I'm going to fire a blast. All right. Um, roll a... Uh, attack roll with disadvantage. Yep. I figured as much. <laughs> oh, that is a 13. 12. It's 12. Um, <clears throat> or 13. You, no, sh 13. you shoot it off into the darkness, <clears throat> but you're unable to tell if it makes contact with anything. It almost seems to disappear. I'd like to uh, see if I can keep moving towards that fountain and maybe dive into it for cover. Uh, can everyone um, make a wisdom saving throw for me? Oh. Thirty twenty. That's a 13. eleven. Ten. I rolled a four. Yeah. And I have a 15. All right. Um, as uh, anyone who rolls under a 15, um, the darkness doesn't, uh, as you, your eyes start to adjust, um, everything around you, the buildings and stuff, now look like um, this weird fog and you can't see anything around you besides this fog now and it's it's not like a heavy fog where it looks like walls it's more of like a mist like you're in a huge field and you can't see the end of it yeah, yeah. I'm still gonna run to that fountain and try to get some cover in the cat. hey you guys seeing this too or is it the ale I don't see uh, no I'm yeah I'm seeing it and I, I didn't drink that much of that party what are okay. you talking about? Seeing what? There's, there's fog everywhere. You don't see it? There's fog all around us. Oh, you mean we see the lack of seeing. Okay, yeah, then I'm, I'm with you. And uh, yeah. as you say this, a loud ringing occurs. And ah. I, I need... Um, <clears throat> I need... It's going to be... Uh, Eris and... Hold on, I need to see something really quick. Eris and... Um, that's going to be Varia. Can Eris and Varia make another wisdom uh, saving throw? 16. Uh, five for Eris, and a six for the spider. Um, it was just for you. Uh, oh, I appreciate okay. you going ahead and doing that. Though. Um, so yeah, you're gonna take seven points of necrotic damage. Both of us? No, just uh, Eris. Eris, Eris, uh, kind of screams and like falls to his knees, hold, holding his ears. What, what is going on? And as you say this, the um, 
to those of you who passed your original um, saving throws that aren't seeing mist around you, um, you see um, out of the uh, darkness around you starts coming in um, what looks like Prometheus members, but they're standing still and don't look like they're coming to attack you, more so almost watching something. That's... It's not good. That's... Why are they just watching? Prometheus members never just watch. Uh, I, I might have an idea. I'm gonna... Um, try to discern who the leader is. Um, give me an insight check. <clears throat> <laughs> That's gonna be... A three. Um, yeah, you're you're just unable to see. There's there's a good bit of them. You're unable to determine, and they're not really standing in a formation or anything that would suggest anything of that nature. Um, looking around, <laughs> the one thing that everyone starts to notice that uh, can see, um, <clears throat> they start to see a figure moving on um, on the ground, uh, kind of towards down the direction that you guys heard the sound. Uh, can everyone? <clears throat> who uh, is not being affected by this sh uh, shroud make a perception check for me. Eight. Twelve. <clears throat> Alright. Uh, you can't uh, you can't exactly make out what it is. Uh, Perrier, you kind of can you can see a form but you you as well can't really see what it is, but you can tell it is moving. It must be something moving. And I'll, I'll point out to it from behind the fountain. <laughs> uh, anybody else seeing that thing? I, not really. I close my eyes and I listen for the whisper in the back of my head and I cast guidance on myself. And I try to see if I can see it again. Um, you attempt to check, and as you before you get the chance to do so, the form <clears throat> launches what seems to be some kind of energy projectile in the direction of your group, and with that, <clears throat> um, lights appear from all behind all these Prometheus members, kind of almost like putting a spotlight on the area you guys are in. <clears throat> and when it does so, those that can see uh, without seeing the shroud are able to tell that this figure is some form of mechanized, what looks to be completely mechanized um, blob almost. It's, it's, it's intricate parts are like rolling over each other through this deep ooze and it's uh, augments what seem to be augments anyway are just kind of rolling around inside of this stuff as it kind of moves in your direction and with that I'm going to need everyone to make um, <clears throat> initiative rolls <clears throat> 6 18 11 21 Eight. Right. Um, and we're going to go ahead and <clears throat> move on over to the battle map. Whoa. Let's break that bad boy up. All right. All right. <clears throat> so, um, we can't see it in roll time. I'm, yeah, I'm about to pull it up. Sorry. Uh, so, you have currently what looks to be um, six Prometheus members. 
kind of standing in these directions right here. And uh, I, I don't exactly know everybody's icons well, because these are, uh, just so the viewers know, um, these icons are not going to be their icons. Once we get our character art in, woo, um, we are going to have actual tokens for everybody with using their character art. So eventually this will be a little easier to understand uh, who's who um, and whatnot. So, right, I'm going to zoom in a, in a little bit here. Who is the hammer looking? Oh, that's a paintbrush. Okay. Um, <laughs> that makes sense. Okay, so you're like, you were hiding like behind this fountain. Um, so where is everybody else in relation? Uh, uh, that sucks. I don't know why the music stopped. I'll be around here. I would have gotten to like roughly here near the fountain, but not like hiding all the way behind it. That's weird. Alright, so, uh, yeah, you guys have control over them, so if you can move them where you would be, um, technically, uh, this is going to go, I'll, I'll say that she was up with, uh, your, and where would your spider be, John? So the spider should be like pretty close to me, uh, and I I I'm like on my knees. Uh, the spider is kind of like my um, that's my token. Oh, okay, so we don't yeah. have, so we don't have so we don't token. we don't have one for the spider, but we can just assume that she's gonna be he he's gonna be within like five feet of me. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um. So and I fell to my knees. So wherever we were, like when when all the stuff went down, that's where I'm I'm probably still there. At the start of initiative. All right, sounds good. <clears throat> All right, so uh, the extra figure um, is going to be uh, right here. I'm going to mark them by uh, giving them a red dot. Every all the other ones are normal. However, this figure right here is the uh, the figure that I was describing earlier, which is moving your direction. <clears throat> um. Beyond that, um, uh, all right. Um, so I'm gonna need everybody's. Did everyone roll their initiative or type it in chat? <laughs> cool. Um, if not, I can. Yeah, thanks. There we go. All right. All right. Um, so. The blob is going to, uh, after, when it shoots this projectile, it's actually going to aim at the fountain. Um, and that projectile is going to hit said fountain, causing a 15-foot um, radius explosion, completely destroying this fountain. Um, and when it does so, it's going to hit each of you for... Seven damage. However, whenever this happens, you can tell that the um, the the charging kind of like fades uh, in the augment that looks like was glowing from the the fire, and uh, it looks like it's having some kind of cooldown period from what you can tell. Where is the blob on the map? It's this one, right? Uh, it's the one with the red dot. Okay, that's the blob. Okay. Um, so with that, um, Mandy, you're up. Um, all right. So I am Nick, going. You're up on deck. Sorry. Or yeah, it's good. Um, I'm going to take my um, easel off of my back, and I'm going to press the hidden button on it so that it transforms into a crossbow. Um, and okay. I'm going to move over behind this bench. All right. 
and I'm gonna point possibly. I'm gonna point at this guy down here. I'm gonna cast a true strike. All right. Um, it sounds good. Um, so go and make that attack roll. Nope. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I could have swore you said no. That's my bad. All right. So uh, that ends your turn. I, I assume. Yep. All right. So uh, next up, Nick. Or I'm. Um, I'm sorry. I keep using the names on the on the uh, roll twenty. Um, with that, uh, Sir Perrier. Oh, uh, no, that wouldn't be me. That'd be uh, Bova. Where's Bova's roll? I don't see it. Uh, I rolled. Yeah, but uh, I mean, Nick B on there is not me. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. All right. Um, so, Chip. It's Chip's turn. Um, I am going to. I'm going to fire and another blast from my hand. Uh, it's an Eldritch Blast at this gentleman with the red dot. All right. And I'll just do it like this. Thank you. And Eris, what was your uh, initiative? Uh, eight. Okay. <laughs> the 18 to hit. Um, 18 does hit. 12 damage. Right. And I'm also going to deploy my shield as well. Alright, um, you deploy your shield and uh, your Eldritch Blast explosion uh, you can tell that it does uh, a decent bit of uh, scorching of the oil blob form that this thing has and some of the components kind of fall out of it. Um, so next up is going to be uh, Dawn's turn. Um, just for the speed of things, I'm just going to say that um, she, uh, from this blast, kind of got knocked down and is um, kind of unconscious. Not in a death roll saving way, but just as uh, out of the fight right now. So with that, um, we're going to say it is, uh, now it is Sir Perrier's turn, I believe, unless actually, never mind. Uh, it would actually be, uh, Scrats. I, your, your number looked different than everybody's. Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to move up to here and I'm going to, I'm going to change my augmented arm into uh, what looks to be like a cannon with a little crank and I'm going to spin the crank and just overcharge it. And then I'm going to point up at the sky. And I'm going to say, all right, let him have it, Pac. And then I'm going to cast sacred flame All right. at the, uh, at the red one. Okay, sounds good. Um, the uh, yeah, the damage uh, does seem to take effect on uh, the blob, and it uh, takes your damage for I believe that was one damage. All one of it. <laughs> All one. <laughs> um, and that's the end of your turn. Uh, yeah, that's the end of that turn. All right, so it's actually up. Eris is up next. <clears throat> uh, Eris is gonna um, stand up, and uh, he's gonna like ho hold his left hand to his temple. And his, his right eye is going to turn red, and he's going to cast um, Hunter's Mark on the blob. And um, then he's going to hold out his uh, his right hand and uh, try to shoot it with the crossbow. All right. Uh, 
Uh, 23. Um, that hits. Yep. Um, okay. Uh, for 14, 14 damage. 13, 13, sorry. 14? Uh, 13, okay. sorry. 13, you're good. I, I got a five with the uh, the hunter's mark. All right, sounds good. Um, next up, Sir Perrier. Right, so what I'm going to do is uh, move around the side of the fountain a bit. And I'll hold up my hand and start speaking some uh, arcane words before unleashing a cluster of three bolts. I'm casting magic missile at uh, that blob. All right. As I do so, I'm going to tell it to, I don't know what you are, but I'm not losing to you. And that's going to be uh, 11 damage. And with that, I'll end my turn. All right. Oh, man. Our other battle song is not working. For some reason, it has decided to die. Um, so how much damage was that? I'm sorry. That's 11. 11. All right. Uh, ending uh, your barrage of attacks, um, the kind of smoke from all your attacks and stuff kind of fade out. And as it does so, um, th those who um, had a... Uh, we're only seeing kind of like the, the cloud around them and stuff like that. Um, if you want to make a saving throw for me. And that will be a wisdom saving throw once more. The people who had the cloud? Yes, the people who still have the cloud. Oh. This is a... Uh, you guys didn't do it on your turn, so I'm uh, just kind of doing it all at once to remove it. Okay, I got a nat 20. Right. That's a twelve. I got a six. Okay, so uh, Eris, uh, yours seems to fade away after that whole uh, ordeal. Uh, however, Chip and Scrat, you both um, fall um, are real. Nothing changes, is what I'm trying to say. And at this point, um, um, you notice that out of this uh, cloud. Um, the fog is starting to get thicker, and it's becoming a little harder to breathe. And with that, you take one point of damage each. Was that that was just for the people who who are still in the fog? Yeah, Chip and Scrabo took okay. uh, a damage. Um, after that, the uh, the blob seems to be sh kind of. Uh, preparing itself a little more as it continues its its way towards you all and as it does so um, this time a different kind of light a different colored light this one uh, the first one would have been something along the lines of red this one being yellow um, kind of starts to glow and, and uh, flicker a little bit as it returns a barrage of magic missiles these all firing separately at each of you. Um, Scrat, you take four damage. Um, Parrier, you take one. Uh, Chip, you take two damage. Varia, you take... Um, one damage. Aeris, you take one damage. Uh, you want to roll for the spider too? Um, yeah. Uh, I, it only had enough to go for you all. Okay. It didn't target the spider or Dawn. How um, much damage was for me? Two, you said? Uh, yeah, it was two. Okay. Alright, um, that will end his turn. Back to Varia. 
um, so I'm kind of like reeling a little bit from the magic missile that I took, but I set my crossbow up on, um, like kind of using this bench as a prop and I'm going to fire it at this one. Um, oh boy. <laughs> Even with advantage, that's a 10. Um, Tim does not cut it. Didn't think it would. Uh, so I'm gonna use the rest of my turn yeah, there we go. to kind of dart over towards this bench to get away from the guy I just shot at. All right. Um, yeah, you dodge out the way. Um, after your attack misses. Um, your your attack actually kind of goes into him, and it, you can see it actually just gets absorbed up into the ooze as it rolls closer towards you. Um, Chip, what's up? Um, well, I'm gonna try to do the same thing again. I'm gonna charge up my blast and fire it at the same guy. All right. Um, you charge your blast and fire it off. Uh, do I have disadvantage? Um, you do not have disadvantage anymore. Okay. Uh, so it's a 19. Yeah, that disadvantage was only because you couldn't see the target earlier. Okay. Um, it's The 19 does hit, yes. Okay. Um, so 8 damage. 8 damage. Uh, mm -hmm. You can tell uh, this blast kind of chunks off a piece of it with a decent bit of the augments kind of flying off. And um, as it continues its roll towards you all. I'm going to say, man, it's a lot easier to fight this when you have people helping you. This many is, is really hard by yourself. All right. Um, Dawn is still um, kind of unconscious on the ground. Um, and she's starting to kind of semi-regain consciousness once more. Um, Scrap. Okay, I'm going to use my Ava to check on the status of all my uh, companions. Okay, um, that'll take your action. And um, when you do so, you can see the health of everyone. So if everyone... Uh, I think you can actually see it in Roll20, can't you? I believe so. If you, uh. if you click on them... It'll like show. It should show. I can I can say it for you if you want. Um, yeah, I don't think I have permission. Yeah, you're good. Um, Sir Perrier has uh, 17 um, health. Um, Eris has 25. Um, Varia has 12. And. Um, I don't know who this last person chip is. 16. I guess that's Chip. Yeah, 16 for Chip. So technically, the, I think the lowest is Varia. Okay. All right. Uh, I'm going to go. You you guys are doing a lot better than I am right now. And then I just move over back here. All right. Okay. Um. With that, it is now Eris' turn. Uh, Eris will um, go to a knee, uh, trying to hide behind the uh, the spider. All right. That is so cruel, hiding behind <laughs> your spider. <laughs> and uh, Eris is going to uh, shoot at the blob again. Sounds good. Uh, for a total of, well, it's a uh, twenty-two to hit. Uh, that hits, yes. Okay, a uh, total of eight damage. Um, so you're shooting at it with a arrow, correct? Yes. Yep. Um, your arrow kind of uh, what's left of it uh, 
kind of sinks in and, and at first it seems like it gets absorbed by the oil um, as it's kind of moving forward but as it goes uh, as it kind of rolls through itself and you see the piece uh, the different augments and pieces come through one piece comes up and you can see your arrow has lodged itself into this piece but this piece is starting to split and as it touches the ground it actually shatters causing an explosion on the ground in front of you a bright light similar to the lights that you saw earlier and when this occurs the uh, by the time the light gets uh, dimmed down and you can see once more the blob is completely destroyed and strewn all over the, the pavement in different areas hey nice one and at this point um, chip and scrat your uh, the the shroud around you dissipates and now you can see everything clearly again um, so with this uh, looking around you can see the different uh, the different sorry I'm trying to zoom in um, the different uh, Promethean members that are scattered around kind of are looking and they kind of uh, start to lift their guns and as they do so um, one of them uh, kind of looks like he's about to shoot but before it can happen, you hear a voice yell out from behind you in the opposite direction that you all were facing while fighting. And as you turn around, you see a man dressed in almost um, an overcoat that kind of like comes up and spreads out almost into like one of those, uh, like a, like what people imagine a vampire wears, like kind of like that kind of thing. And it goes to the back and it's all red on the inlay and stuff. And you can tell it's a, like, even from this distance, just the fabric is just unbelievable. Um, you can you can literally see the quality from this distance, and that's insane. Um, he walks up and he kind of stops. He uh, peers over you all past the destruction of the fountain and at the uh, the strewn out uh, figure that you have all destroyed. And he yells out to all the other Prometheus guards and says, "Men, I think this best." be left alone for now. I wouldn't want any of you dying and not going back to your families, would you? He looks around and uh, they all kind of uh, take a step back and semi-lower their weapons and he says and plus if we let them live we get to play with them later. That was a horrible test subject honestly. I can't even believe they had us come out here with that. And as he says this he turns around and he uh, starts walking off and says, till next time and yep. As he uh, says this, a portal opens up in front of him that looks like staticky and kind of glitchy. It's a giant ring of red, and he walks through it, and it kind of just warps in and uh, dissipates, and the other Prometheus members start running off. No, they can't leave. I, they know my face. They they know Varia. I, they know me. I. We need to chase them. We need to get them. Calm down, honey. I told you, you put your boots in the shit you're already in. Yeah, it looks like you're stuck with us now. What were they talking about? Does anyone know? No. They could be talking about a lot of things. All I know is we're alive still, and that's uh, about as much as I can take from them. Do you know how hard I had to work to get the level of fame that I have gotten to? <laughs> you, I'll, I'll pull back the mask and I'll say uh, yeah it can all go away in an instant too I'll just close it back up you see Mr. Perrier has horror. a point <laughs> we got away with our lives and that's important um, and as they disappear um, you were now out of combat so let's uh, let us head back over um okay. Is that, is that orc girl okay? Where where are you? Uh, she gets up and kind of looks around and kind of asks what happened. Well, you missed all the fun. We uh, fought some kind of blob thing. I don't know what it is. They called it a test subject. Important thing is, for whatever reason, Prometheus gifted us our lives these days. So... Prometheus gifts us nothing. All they do <laughs> is take. I'm gonna walk over to the blob and see if I can like 
poke around and figure out what it was actually made of. Um, you head over and kind of start inspecting everything, and uh, as you do so, uh, you can't really make out anything. Can you make an arcana check for me, real quick? I can. <laughs> and it's a nat one. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyone else who would like to approach and uh, inspect uh, that th- wood, let me know and uh, go ahead and make an arcana check for me as well. Yeah, I definitely like to, uh, as I'm explaining what went on, walk towards that and take a look. Had a two. <laughs> <laughs> I got a six. I ended up with a 16. Um, I would have advantage on this. Correct. Or no? Uh, message me why in Discord. Um. So, Superior, as you go up, um, and kind of ask about this or look, looking over these things. Um, the one thing you did notice was, um, as you look around and see these all these different augment uh pieces and parts, you can tell that. The reason um, it was doing different uh, magic every time uh, instead of doing one consistent attack was because it had these little makeshift pieces that you could tell could only withhold so much power and needed uh, had some kind of drawback. It almost seemed as though it was a kind of this uh, a mix of random augments that people have from the city compiled into something that could be able to use them. Um, as it uh, was able to charge one to another to another and chain them together in a reaction-like thing. Well, I can't say that I know what it is, but uh, I don't like the way it looks. Looks like a jumble of Ogs from all around the city to me. Um, so, Chip, yes, I will give you that advantage, yeah. Okay, hey guys, uh, I think I might have. Let me let me take another look. I didn't see anything the first time, but let let me try again. It's an eight. <laughs> um, you do you do realize that um, after kind of superior explains this, that um, you uh, remember dealing with something uh, pseudo similar, you know, in a form of you were kind of. How do I say this without giving too much away? You know stuff. You basically know that this was made in a lab by Prometheus, is what I'm trying to say. I think that's the that's the motto of the, the show. How do I say this without giving everything away? <laughs> yeah, no joke. <laughs> um, this this stuff looks like it was made in a Prometheus lab. I've seen it in some of my simulations. Some of my trainings. Simulations? What kind of simulations are you in? I've never seen something like that. Um, it's just training that I did. You know, doesn't doesn't everyone do training in simulations and Yeah, but you're gonna have to show me that training sometime. I'd like to get a closer look myself. Um, but just kinda like don't say anything, just like uh Why would you train in a simulation? How else would you train? In the real world, like normal people? It's do or die in this city. I'm I'm none not sure what you're talking about. What do you mean? The more you practice, the better. He can train however he wants. Besides, don't poo-poo on virtual training. That's how I got most of my skills. Yeah, skills. (laughs) Don't worry. When you need my help. You'll be there for it. We'll see. Um, so you guys uh, all kind of collect yourself. And uh, at this time, um, everything seems clear and you're able to continue moving. Um, uh, Pac uh, shows back our kind of uh, voices to everyone in the area of, of all of the group and says... I am sensing that they actually 
left. I, I thought that was... They were going to regroup and... Uh, that's very odd. Well, some things don't bear thinking about too hard. Talk, We've were you got able, our lives. Were you able to track where they went? I only have a short range. I can't... That's why I wouldn't be able to tell you, but I... Oh, I definitely wouldn't have just let him roll up on us like that. How well do you guys think they saw me? Um, let me find out, Park says, as uh, you can tell, uh, you can see in one of Scrat's eyes, like, uh, his lens starts, like, just scanning through stuff. Um, it, and then uh, she comes back and says, um, how, uh, what's... Mm, how fame like how much is your face around the city recently a lot yeah imagine that like times five <laughs> okay um well I cast disguise self on myself um and as I do that um it the, my augments start to glow like brighter and brighter and brighter blue, getting closer and closer to like white. Um, I change to look like a five foot seven high elf, and then my clothes start to change to like a dress. Okay, so um, all right. Um, sorry, I really wanted to make a joke. Um, anyway, um. <laughs> So you you change nothing. I'll tell you later. Uh, you change into <laughs> you, you change uh, you change into uh, this form, and um, the group is now uh, uh, kind of able to take a, a decent breather. And Pock comes back and says, "We, I guess we're fine for the moment. Maybe we will should use this opportunity to get going." There might be less attacks if they are waiting to do something. So so do we not think that the 15-minute thing is in effect anymore? Like we can take a breather? Uh, if I had to guess, um, they're probably planning something different. So not saying that we know when they will come back, but uh, you probably will be fine for a decent bit from now. And you said they're tracking us using these uh, GPS things that they have on our race augments? Yes, uh, and we're going to have to find replacements. That's what we need to hopefully head to this place that Chip w doesn't want to go. Well, wouldn't it be better just take him out? Uh, you would... Um, two things would happen. One, you would probably... How do I put this? Uh, die? And um, two... Uh, yeah, it's, it's not pretty. We've uh, seen it a time or two. Mm. Yeah, um, uh, Scrat was a little lazy in one of our operations. Lazy? Oh, oh, oh okay. But to, yeah, yeah. It, it uh, was only one time. Uh, Trust me, I scolded him for three months afterward. Uh, yeah, he's not going to be the one cutting me open. <laughs> nah, you worry too much. Scrat's a good man. He might have made a mistake, but everybody makes them from time to time. To be fair, that was before my policy with him that he can only operate with me um, re residing inside of his augments. So I think you'll be safe as long as I'm around. We probably uh, don't want to do it until you guys have had a chance to rest. It, uh, it may or may not hurt a lot so there's the whole death thing but oh it it definitely feels horrible if you do it while you're awake yes yes uh -huh. um, yes yes it does probably not that bad anyway have, have you ever received an upgrade of, of your augments yeah. I, I, I would say almost all of you have so um, well, it would it would be similar to that process. You'd almost have to go into a um, almost like a coma-like state of paralysis uh, to not feel the pain, and it would take almost half a day. Um, that seems dangerous. 
Uh, yes, we would definitely not want to do all of us at the same time. I mean, I don't have to worry about it, so I guess I could stand guard? Uh, well, yeah. we have to get the parts you first. know these people. Why are you offering to stand guard? I, I don't know. Scrat saved my life. I mean... That's I'd feel more comfortable right. with him watching us anyhow. At, uh, at this point, um, Chip, you uh, hear a transmission call coming, and all of you actually can hear this. Uh, <laughs> I just, like, hang up on it. Um, that was weird. It, Another uh, glitch, I guess. It calls one more time. Oh, man. This is... It's not working very well. Um, this time... Um, Chip's whole body is restrained, almost like in a sturdy, yes, like that. And a um, a visual hologram projects out of his eye, um, and all of you can see a face facing him. Um, it, it's kind of like a very, you can't really tell anything about the features of said face. Um, and a masked voice um, comes, uh, starts talking and says, you did not even call me. I assume this is another failure. Uh, <laughs> it, it wasn't really my fault. I, I got there and I said the code word and, and uh, there were a lot of Prometheus. Uh, oh my god, that's going to have to be another... Re uh, um, so if you... Another what? What did you say? <sighs> what did I can't I say? go there again. I can't. I can't. What happened? I went to where I was supposed to go, and I said the code word, and then I got attacked. By? Prometheus. Did you say the code word wrong? No. Did you they say the code word wrong? I said it. <sighs> I, sa I said it. I said player slay. And what did they say back? They said uh, to kill is something not not to be killed. It's like they said something else. Like they they said that that's why they were going to kill me because I said the code word. Oh, that's so. It wasn't you fucking up this time. Surprising. Hey. Uh, shut it. And as he as he says this, your jaw gets locked up. I want you back as soon as possible, and we apparently have a lot of discussing to do. If you're not back in the allotted time frame, I'll give you a timer on your augments to count down for you since you need it so given to you and force feed to you. I ain't gonna force feed you, but he cut it off my mouth. If you do not get back by the selected time, I will start shutting down your augments and come retrieve you myself. Further. <sighs> Enough. Be here by tomorrow. And the call ends. And you have access to your body again. Duh! <sighs> so... That was your dad. Uh... uh... What did he want? Um, you guys heard all that? Yeah, a little bit. Some of it. I mean, not all of it. I wasn't eavesdropping or anything. I just happened to notice, you know, your eyes started glowing. I'm thinking I might need to have one of those surgeries, too. Yeah, perhaps that's uh, for the better. Yeah. But I thought you said that you didn't need to worry about it. I, not from Prometheus. Anyway, I thought that's what we were talking about. But and as you are saying this, a um a timer pops up, um o over hovering over your arm, counting down the seconds until the 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 hour that he basically gave. Well, mm. go ahead. I'm gonna have to either go there or we're gonna have to do something quick. There's not much time left. Got to hustle. Then we best get to moving. I um, mean, I, I said a day. I, I don't know what's wrong with me. I meant to say like the amount of days of travel it would take, which is like roughly five. So okay, yeah, my <laughs> bad. <laughs> get there in a day. It's five days away though. Have fun. Um, <laughs> like, 
uh, <laughs> said an hour. I'm like, wow. <laughs> uh, all right. So, um, so yes, that is uh, how. Um, that is the amount of time. Sorry, the five day uh, is just counting down on your arm, and it doesn't go away. It just kind of hovers over your arm. Just uh, even whenever you look away from it, it's kind of just barely, like softly there, very opaque. But I. I'm like swatting at it and then I'm going to cast disguise self to try to disguise it and get it to go away. Um, it goes away and then it pops back up. Uh, <sighs> well, I guess we don't have to worry about a clock anymore, guys. You know, that's a very good point. Yeah. But uh, standing around here discussing it isn't going to help us much. You know where the place is. Why don't you lead the way, Chip? <laughs> Well, we're not. I don't want to go there. I'm saying we. I don't know, if, Scrat. You can do something to help me. I can't go there and and get the modifications. Uh, Pock kind of uh, comes up in your head, Scrat, just yours, and says, "I I think we don't have any better options." Yeah, I don't. I don't. I don't think I can do much for you here, bud. We're gonna have to. Uh... We have to go back there. Fortunately, yeah. Okay. Off to the maw. And you guys, uh, is everyone da uh, down to go, I guess? Is everyone heading that direction? Quick question. How far away are we from my art studio? Um, Considering the side you're on you're in the let me pull up the map really quick um i know where you're at but i can't remember the exact um i think you're in the bergs yeah the bergs right scrap yes yeah yeah you're bergs. on the tip of the bergs towards the uh the very tip of it if you're looking at the map the bergs towards uh the, t <laughs> the tip that goes in towards the middle just tip just the tip uh, not that not that um... deep in it just the tip Hold on. The Bergs. Where's the Bergs? Should we go that way and see how it feels? Or should we just go where I was going? Wait, where's... Oh, is this, oh, is this party foul? Or go, I'm confused. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. I'm, 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 I was, I, I, it's my fault. Um, all right. So, yeah. You're, uh, to your art studio, your character would know um, that roughly... It wouldn't be a far way to go at all. Probably only, like, an hour or two, right? Just oh, through hell... the fashion arena? around it no that'd be like because it took you a half day to get from the stadium to here oh right so it would be a f it would be like almost a full oh, day a little almost over. a full day all right i had some supplies that i wanted to possibly pick up in my art studio but I'm sorry, I don't mean to laugh, but uh, you're going to go to the studio that you own that, I mean, maybe I don't know, but uh, I, mean, I think they'd look for you there. They already know where you are, right? Mm -hmm. Wasn't that, that them? True I have too. really important works, and I have supplies. There's um, a lot there that... Pock kind of interrupts you and says, yeah, when I was scanning your face and name... Um, your address was already popping up on the Prometheus side. Okay, well, I guess we'll just have to pick supplies up along the way for me. There are things that I didn't bring to the Clash Arena because there are some things you just don't leave the house with. Pock says, oh. what else could you possibly bring of that nature besides an easel that's a crossbow? Paintbrush rollers that are rapiers? Oh, valid point. Pun intended. <laughs> Good one. <laughs> well, I guess as they say, dems the brakes. Sucks when everything crumbles around you, doesn't it? I feel like someone hurt you and you're not handling it very well, Perry. You know, that's a very astute observation, but frankly... You don't make the pay grade, and you don't make the time. Oh, I didn't so. want to know about it. I just wanted to make a statement that I feel like someone hurt you. Eh. I just wanted to let I you know that I think that's pretty obvious. 
oh no not physically um and as you say this um uh, uh scrat pock talks to just you one more time and says um you know um th- that guy that we worked on uh, I-, I think it was exactly um um 20,057 and maybe a quarter hours ago now uh, oh i'm sorry um yes uh you know the the one with the gash in like the the thigh and you almost cut his leg off and then i was like you're too drunk wait the hour um you remember that one uh yeah. oh yeah i do uh what 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 about him um didn't he say he owes us a favor oh well uh yeah certainly uh, well, maybe we could he, he lives on the edge of the center of town maybe we could um uh, maybe we could kind of scrape by on the way and uh use that as a uh, spot i i uh, from what he was rambling about while he was under i believe hold on let me pull my data logs up and uh she projects um the, a sound file for all of you to hear and in the sound file um she plays a specific part where uh you hear a drunken uh, or like a really f- messed up guy who's uh kind of like high on different medicines while during the operation um is just going um oh, I, you don't even understand i got i got a lead basement that'll like keep any tracking out like just anything like oh my god like it's and, and then she stops and goes yeah that would be very useful right now i think that's right do you have this location park uh yeah uh, i i know she said the he said the blocks roughly i don't think he gave us an actual location we'll have to search for him i think his what, what, what was his name it was like l- l- something with an l l- i i definitely don't remember but if you don't remember i definitely don't um maybe it was leonard or larry I, i'm not exactly sure um he he never said it it was only on his uh shirt and i can't i know you said it a couple times but i uh i uh wasn't i did i normally delete all your audio foot or your audio recordings of your voice uh, i already hear it enough <laughs> well uh, there, you, there you go gang we need a lead basement to hide out in uh we can look for my guy all right lead the way I don't... What? What, Led the way? Yeah. You know, like, he shows us how to get there. I'm moving moving you lower on the triage. What? Well, looks like I'm moving up in the world, boys. Well... (sighs) Uh, Don Don says, You're already at the top for me. (laughs) Uh, I'm glad someone's got my back. She really likes you, Mr. Perry. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, please, please don't get her started. I've I've listened to her talk about you for for uh, an hour today, and that's that's far more than I ever asked for. Yeah, and it's more than I would have had told. So, let's stop flapping gums and beat feet. Um, and you guys start heading towards that direction. Um. This uh, on the the travel time to that area, it's it's really late at night, um, so uh, it's probably about almost a almost a half day to that area as well, um, maybe a little over. And as you guys get there, uh, you're kind of approaching, and you're very tired. It's uh, daybreak, and the city's starting to start to be bustled again, um, and there's a lot of people out and about, and it's getting harder and harder to stay away from people. Um, as we've been walking, I've been repeatedly like casting disguise self to keep my disguise up. Well, I've only, how long have we been walking? Um, roughly so far, you've only been walking about eight hours. Okay. So the first two hours I cast disguise self and then I revert back to Varia and pull the hood of my cloak. And then I cast disguise self and make myself look like she was look like she did look like um dress and all with her disguise self i like this one i'll have to use it sometime it 
that that was me. That was that was mine. Yeah, I'll be your decoy. It'll work. That oh, this is freeing. Kind of cool. Okay. Um, nice breeze here. Um, as you guys walk, um, every once in a while, um, someone will like uh, as superior walks by they'll just like be like oh my god like it's pointing and some people laugh some people just like are um saying this or that and every once in a while as uh your doppelganger um chip as you varia walks by um people will uh will point and uh be no say, i'm varia chip is the person that was I'm... looking like yeah i'm disguised as the high elf the high elf oh okay so you're just okay i see i see yeah so, so i'm very so okay so my bad i was i misinterpreted that no, you're um fine. so every once in a while when you're walking by varia um some people will um kind of you know seem to kind of approach you but i assume you guys would kind of skirt away from all that um and as uh you the day goes or starts to get a little uh more involved there's more and more people filling these streets and you all start to feel um, exhausted uh, just from being awake for so long and having to walk way more than many of you have uh, walked for this long of a uh, stretch all at once. I mean, I'm pretty know. tired, guys. I'm about ready to fall down myself. Yeah, same here. What are you guys talking about? We've only been walking for... A few hours. You must have taken like twice as many steps. Aren't you tired? No, I do this all the time. Oh. He's riding a spider. Oh right. Yeah, well, I mean, cheating. My butt, my butt is kind of sore, but I mean, we're still good. Oh, God forbid your butt gets sore. Well, we're gonna have to find a place to rest. Someplace uh, uh, safe, though. Um. So. As uh, as you guys are getting a little closer, um, one uh, person uh, in particular kind of gets near you guys and, and uh, kind of looks at you a little weird and then kind of uh, turns around and kind of walks the opposite direction. And you start to notice a handful of people doing this. And um, Pock comes comes up and says uh we might have a problem oh really you uh, think i uh after the first one did it i looked it up and they're starting to broadcast your faces as terrorists not to just the promethean guards but to the populace as well i'll never sell a painting again there's make... such a thing as an anonymous artist, you know that, right? Oh. Yes. And um, at this point, um, one person kind of is walking up. I need everybody to make a perception check. Mm. 19. Eight. Um, uh, 12. Anyone above, anyone above an 18 um, <laughs> will notice... Um, a figure kind of walking in the distance kind of like they're like it almost seems like they're following you but they're following you from in front of you which is a very odd thing in itself Um, but when you start to notice them they keep looking back and they see you notice them and when they do they look at you make eye contact turn away and they kind of take something out of their cloak and they put it down in between two stands that are closed down and walk off as you're kind of walking the area you're in is starting to get a little bit uh, there's a couple of small little tiny shops almost like a flea market feel of like outside little areas for people to buy random little things and it's it's not quite open yet uh guys i just saw someone in front of us and this is going to sound weird but it looked like they were following us from in front does that make sense? No. Mm. It, like they were paying attention to us, but they're walking ahead of us. You know? Oh. Like, well, oh, yes. That okay. That makes why you phrase things so strangely. I, 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 I'm sorry. I just that's the, the, what I thought when I saw that. Um, Don't worry about it, Chip. 
it, did they so, did they do anything? This is a uh, pretty typical behavior of you know someone following in front of a convoy. Uh, oh really? Yeah, I've I've seen this once or twice. Um, usually they'll uh, they'll they'll try to set something up ahead of us. Um, did they did, are they out of sight now? Yes, uh, uh, yeah. they would have seen that. Yeah. Yeah, they they dropped. We should uh we should something. we should slow down. They dropped something. Yeah, they like took something out of their cloak and put it down in, right over there. Oh, we should definitely slow down. Let's try to keep a keep a safe distance from. You... They took something out of their cloak and they put it down. They put it down like they and they, they saw me. They made eye contact. Can we see what it is? I no. Okay, they, they took something out of their cloak. They put it down. We yeah. are being tagged as terrorists. It is being broadcast everywhere. Does that sound like a bomb to anyone else? Yeah, maybe we should take a detour. That's what I was thinking. I want to get as far away from that as we can. I mean, shouldn't we do something about it? We should probably check it out. I don't want anyone to. There's a lot of people here, like a okay. lot of people. That is okay, true. Okay, come here, and I'm gonna just put my hand on Chip, and I'm gonna cast guidance on him. Go do whatever it is you wanted to do. Okay. Um, how, did, how do you cast Guidance out of curiosity? I'm kind of curious how you flavored that. Uh, well, I close my eyes and I listen to a slight whisper in the back of my head. And then um, the network pathways on my arms, the dark blue um, turns, the dark blue's down here. So the dark blue down here turns um, like bright blue white. And then it just like kind of envelops the area that I was pressing onto him. And my tattooed purple arm kind of flares up for a second with a flash of a different color. Yep. Um, well, that was cool. That was a good thing, right? Yeah. Well, I think. Oh. Usually it's good for me. I will so well, I guess we'll find out if it's going to be good for you. So go on. Go Hopefully. Ahead. All right. Okay, I'm going to go check it now. Uh, uh, I wouldn't. Uh, I feel like uh, somebody mentioned bombs earlier. I mean, I did, but he's really, really thinking that he, he wants to go. So what if we just shot it from over here instead of going right next to the thing? Or maybe we could scream really loud and say, hey, run away. There's a thing. Okay. Well, I have an idea. Oh, I no. Have an, I, have, I have an idea, guys. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move up. I'm going to move up like within 30 feet of it. Okay, and then? No, I'm, I'm physically moving up to like 30 feet. Oh. Mm -hmm. uh, are you going to tell us your idea before you leave us? Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, do you guys want to come with me? You seem No, not close. really. They're... It's a little close. That's a bomb. It could be a bomb. I'm going to try to gauge how far away it is from me. Um, As you all are discussing this, Varia, uh, once more, a flashing appears in front of you, like much like the ones from earlier. This time saying, take it. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, are we good? I'm going to go up there and I'm going to grab it now. Yeah, uh, just please don't. No, no, okay, okay, wait, wait, guys. I have a. a I, I stop, just safely. stop. I wouldn't do it. Just, I, there's a voice in my head and. That sounds it's like a personal problem. Okay. Just go take it. Just go take the package. Really? Okay. <laughs> I don't want this cool glowy thing to go to waste, so I'm going to try just, it. Just go and take the package. <laughs> when I get to about 30 feet away, I'm going to hold out my tattooed arm, and it's going to start glowing. And you're going to see it go towards my hand, and it's going to start glowing like purple. And then this like ghost hand is going to come out um, from the energy. And I'm going to have it go over there and pick up the package. Um, you go over and have it pick up the package. And uh, it grabs it. And nothing happens. And uh, it pulls it over to you. And you hold this pouch. And it it's a very... It like looks like it has it might be heavy or something. But when you look inside, it's like nothing but a piece of paper. Like a scroll inside. Okay. Well, there's a piece of paper. So I'm going to grab and when it comes back by the way like the hand is going to come back with it and then it's going to kind of fuse into my hand and then it's going to like light up the rest of my arm and the thing's just in my hand um and then i'm going to 
take out the scroll and and read it um reading it um uh uh Pock kind of uh tells Scrat to kind of move over and read it as well um and uh as you if, uh, will, you, will you do so <laughs> everyone's got a voice in their head apparently um and uh well, two people <laughs> yeah so, so you walk so, so you walk up and um uh she actually reads it out loud for the whole group for just you all to hear um and the note reads um um come find us we will protect you and we will also help you find what you're looking for why who what these are all questions that we have answers for and whenever um you read this um varia another flash and says go and um pock gets uh tells you scrat that she has a weird feeling that for some reason um it, it she feels some kind of energy that she understands that this is something that you guys should maybe trust and with that we are going to end tonight's session oh i don't want to stop <laughs>